Welcome to, welcome to the Dirt and Sports Podcast. Welcome to the Dirty Sports Podcast. I am Andy Ruther, coming to you live from the Smut Studio in Venice Beach, California, with my co-host, Joey No Chill Prano. How you feeling, Andy? I'm good, man. You recovered? Holy shit. The highest I've ever been. 420. Ripped you up, huh? Bro, (laughs) R.I.P. me. I said we should all go to the Dodgers Nationals game because I wanted to root against the Nationals. And uh, it worked out perfectly. It was Kershaw, Scherzer, 420. We got four tickets. We brought the interns. It was like intern bonding. It was the uh, it was the pre-production meeting for the new the interns show. It's uh, it was a bonanza, and probably the highlight of the whole day was you got so remarkably high that you just kept you literally kept topping yourself in stoned failures. <laughs> like I've never seen somebody, I've never seen some of the things that you did that night. Like I was like, is this your first time smoking weed? Well, let's just start off by saying I didn't know that on 420 because I had never been to a dispensary. That Hitler was born. I know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a downer for the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did know Everybody's that. Everybody's like, let's get high also. Would you go back and kill baby Hitler today? Yeah, I did know that actually. But what I did not know, Prano, was that the dispensaries on 420, it's like Black Friday with their deals. Yes. So I was not aware of that. Yeah. That again, you're like, we got a first timer here. Well, <laughs> I didn't have a medical card. Right. Now that weed is fully legal, you know, I ventured across the street to the Green Goddess. And when I saw the deals and I walked into the shop and half off, 25% off, if you spend this much, you get this much free weed. I, I went in like, oh, I'm going to spend a few bucks. And next thing you know, I come out with a bunch of. How much did you spend total? Not that much, 103 bucks. But you, but you did well because it was, uh, it was uh, a sale day. It got me a disposable pen, six pre-rolled joints. You can see it all on uh, Stoned in Venice. Yeah. Currently airing on YouTube. Yeah, I'm doing a new segment where I just get high and walk around uh, Venice. Anyway, so yeah, I, I stocked up, needless to say, and we filmed Stoned in Venice, Trevor, myself, and EJ, and I was already baked. And then we all ate the edible before we got in Trevor's car to go to the game. And that for sure was what started the epic downfall of me. I mean, let's let's go to let's cut to you entering the ballpark. And I mean, that was the most the the whole day was overshadowed by that moment. Like, I barely remember Kershaw Scherzer. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, the big matchup of the day, the big pitcher's duel, was you versus the security guard that was really trying to help you out, bro. He was giving you intentional walks. He gave you a free base. He balked at one point. You walked up to a metal detector. You took everything out of your pockets. But... Except your phone, which you held in your hand. Which was like the stoned (laughs) moment. Yeah. So, so So you were looking at your phone, and then you were placing items into the plastic bowl. Yes. Your wallet, your keys, <laughs> your vape pen, your <laughs> tin of edibles. Yes. And not your phone. Yes. So you're already causing him to like think twice because the guy's like, yo, what about your phone? Did you see what the button? And you, you, yeah. you all but said, should I put my phone in there with my edibles or should it be in a separate bowl? Like you basically said that. I was that close to saying it. The one guy goes, your phone, your phone. And I'm so stoned. I'm staring at my phone, which has the tickets, you know, of course, with our friends from SeatGeek, the electronic tickets. I'm staring at the yeah, phone. Yeah, the e-tickets were a little – you were so high, you like, the e-tickets were a lot for you to handle. Oh. <laughs> and, I, and I knew yeah. it. Just walking up, I was like yeah. – I was like, I have to follow Ruther. He's got the tickets. And I knew – I knew before you even got to – I was like, this is going to be a disaster. Like, I have to stay close to him. He can't get through. Basically, the edibles fully kicked in. Probably seven to ten minutes before we walked up to the gate. You know, you can just carry the edibles in your pocket. So we need to go back to the edibles thing because that's yeah. a huge. That's a huge. Yeah, I don't even know what. Huge well, first of is, all, but. he they were in a metal container. Well, that's the thing; they're not metal. 
They're like you know, like you remember the old Altoids that came yeah. in the little. Yeah, it's tin. Th- it's tin. But so that'll like, go. That'll probably go off. Here's the thing. I kept my vape pen in my pocket. Walked yeah. Right through. No, the vape pen's not going off. No, this is like it's like the same material. So like, yeah. those are fine. You just keep those in your pocket. You keep moving along. You keep the line or steady also, flowing. Or also just definitely don't bring anything that's any sort of metal-like substance or in a large. And then hand it over to okay, the security okay. guard. Like, here on. you go. I'm Here's not my making edibles. excuses. No, there's no excuse. It was, H- it was however, phenomenally I was so stoned. You, you're acting like I'm thinking logically here. I'm so stoned. I'm putting all my marijuana without even my phone, which is the main thing they want anyway. Yeah. That's how stoned I am. You didn't say that. And you were like paranoid in the car. You're paranoid about how long it take us to get there. Every intersection was like you grasping the seat. You're like, are we gonna make it? I'm like, it's a green light. Like they're stopping the other cars. But then your paranoia went completely out the window when you were bringing an illicit substance into a uh, major league ballpark. You were just like, whatever. You can bring drugs in, right? Now, now here's the worst. Four twenty. The worst thing about it all, because Trevor and I were behind you guys. <laughs> you yeah. Wa- you gave the man the tin, right, with the edibles. Yes. And he the tells you, And he he looked you in the eye. And he whispered, and he was like, "Dude, you can put these in your car, man." And you were like, <laughs> "What? No, no, no." And th- this is what he did. He, he pulled me in close. He looks at it. I mean, it says on it. And he goes, "Are you fucking stupid?" <laughs> yeah. He's like, "Are you the fucking dumbest guy ever?" He's Are like, these "Drugs, dude. You you can't take these in. You can go put them in your car. You can't park here." <laughs> And I literally was like, what? Because I'm so stoned. He's like, or you can just throw them out here. And I was like, I can't walk to the car right now. So I just threw all the but weed. Then, but whoa, no, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. You what, skipped you, a major part yeah, of the story. What you said before that. Where I just <laughs> locked up completely. I'm just like, I'm just going to pretend I'm following this dude through the metal detector. We don't need a ticket yet. It's fine. And then you go, Prado. Yeah. Prado. <laughs> I thought you could bail me out, And bro. I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to answer. Like, Prado, he says I can't bring this in. I go, what are you talking about? Yes. Even though I'm, even though I, it's a, I'm amazed that I haven't passed out just based on your stupidity. I yeah, can't believe I was that I bad. didn't pass out just going like, I can't believe this. I was in full blinking guy meme. It was a loop. I was just, I can't believe what I'm seeing. And then you're like, the edibles, I can't bring them in. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. You can't? I don't know. And then the guy's like, you take it back to your car. And you're like, or I could just, and you're like talking to me. And all I wanted to do was go. Buy, I was going to walk around. you like, hey, man, I don't have drugs. Can I go around him? And then you're like, I'll just throw them out. I'm like, definitely do that or whatever. Just please make this stop. Well, I was so confused. And when you're that high, like time basically stops. And I was confused. It reminded me of the scene in Fear and Loathing where they pull up, where they're so high that they park on the curb. And he's like, you can't park here. He's like, is this not a reasonable place to park? He's like, you're parked on the curb, sir. That, that's how I felt. So he basically said, you can go back to your car or you can throw them out right here. And the, again, the concept of walking back to Trevor's car was just too much for me to handle that I pitched a full tin of edibles, which whatever, it was $11. Now, you guys were pissed, of course. I didn't give a shit. I just wanted to be out of that situation. I was laughing. Yeah, we all were laughing. Okay. I was kind of like, I don't know. I, I, I was so in awe of what you were doing. It was so mind-blowing to me that I can't imagine anybody reacting the way it did. I was surprised you didn't eat all of them in front of the guy. You're like, can I eat them all before I go in? I'm like, can I, uh, if it's not in the tin, can I put them down my pants? So we do get into the game, <laughs> and they're, they're great seats. We were in uh, right field, basically third row. Third row behind Harper, Puig. We were right where Scherzer was warming up. Yeah, and then I made my second awful Ruther mistake of uh, just openly smoking the vape pen right in front of uh, another Dodgers personnel. Yeah. That was when we, were, we, we weren't even in our seats. You went like – like if you had been in the seats – there's no one. There's no one just like looking at everybody in the seats. You were like on the concourse, just like hitting the vape pen. Yeah, another dumb Ruther move. And she came over and she she looked at our group and said, "One of you guys is smoking." And I played dumb. And then Trevor Trevor owned up to. It. He was like, "Oh, it was me." First she goes, she goes, "You can't do that here." And I was like, "I can't drink a Blue Moon and have a <laughs> fucking pretzel." And she's like, no, you can't. You're welcome. Yeah. (laughs) You're welcome. How do you think about that? Taking the blame for you. 
Yeah, I know, but you also had your. Uh, I did. I didn't. I, that's true. You had I didn't your, know which one you she had was going. Trevor was so high. He didn't know he wasn't smoking. He didn't <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, he didn't know. know that he wasn't yeah, the one was, that was in let's trouble. Let's be honest. Every I actually didn't was know was that lit. I wasn't being yelled at for eating a fucking hot dog and yeah, drinking a Yeah, you're the lame one over here, not at our level, not as high as yeah. us. But let's be honest. For the record, that's because he threw out the edibles. <laughs> all of us were fucking stoned. Yeah. Now I was next level. It was like it was your first time smoking pot. Like, I honestly felt like the whole day, I was like, does he not know? <laughs> no, but I told you, edibles do me in, man. That's what it is. Like, you become special edibles. Yes, <laughs> yes. I am a lightweight, and I left the show, or I left the game, because I had to perform by there. Yeah, hilarious. Which, yeah. So I left with Trevor in the seventh inning, because I had a show I by I feel there. like we really, Trevor had to go home, but I feel like, EJ and I really dropped the ball not going to the show because I can't imagine that your recollection of the show is anywhere. You were probably <laughs> like, oh, no, I'm pretty good. Like at one point, you know, maybe I had him, maybe I lost him. I feel like you were like laying on the ground, swimming like a fish, and like people are like, well, you can't have that guy back. He lost his goddamn mind. Well, my the, my opening jokes, I tried to explain what happened walking through security. Always gonna always start with the new stuff. <laughs> and no one laughed. It was like crickets in the room, and they were staring at me. And I was like, okay, cool. Gonna start with the 420 stuff. And and then I did do some stuff that worked. But the edible, just so you guys know, I ate another edible, being an idiot, before I went on stage, and basically that kicked in. On our ride back from Echo Park to Venice, which is a fucking blur for me. Well, Jorge was driving. All I remember was Jorge. Our, Jorge was killing it, by the way. Our yeah, Jorge was we got the to guy. This, what's that? Jorge was the guy. Jorge like, he was knew, the man. He yeah. was cool. Jorge was cool. We pulled right up to where you were doing the show. He he busted a Yui in the middle of sunset. Pulled right up to the club like he's fucking your your you know limo driver. You got right in his car. And then he fucking took us right back to Venice. He got us through a DUI checkpoint. Which, which I got to say on air. You I were told, freaking out. I was freaking out. Even though out. you weren't drunk. You and know you were a passenger. Yeah. You're I, just in the back like, you got a fucking dart in your neck. Jorge's like, shut up. I didn't know what was going on. We, we went through a DUI checkpoint in Santa Monica. And the whole time I kept thinking that I had to get out of the car and walk a straight line. And I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Even though... Like you said, I'm a passenger. Right. That's how fucked up and, I was. And also, you had nothing to worry about because everything illegal you turned over to the people at Dodger Stadium. True. So you, had, you literally had nothing left to worry about. True. So then we arrive at Prano's place. And we got out of Jorge's car. What, what was Jorge driving? I couldn't tell you. I don't remember. And I realized I had to walk from Prano's place to my place, which is like a five-minute walk. But I was so fucked up, I didn't think I could do it. But you had Benny the Jet with you. So, so I had I had EJ Benny the Jet over here. What were you? What was going through your head? Because when we got out of the car, I was like, I can't do this walk. It was no, just no, no. well, you didn't say that. You actually got out of the car and you literally looked around. And you said, I have no idea where we're at. So that was pretty comforting. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Prano was like, All right, cool. I'm dipping out, guys. Yeah, I was like, I know where I'm at. Prano, outside my apartment, which is three blocks from the, Ruther's the place. Thing, so. What's funny is Ruther, you were kind of just like in a daze, looking around, and Prano like kind of was like, Hey, and he pointed in a, just a general direction. He's like, Hey, four blocks that way. He'll, he'll know. And then I just started walking with you. And you, we were walking, and there were homeless people yelling at each other. And you were just telling me how you were like. I love just biking at night here, man. You were like, I just go, I go all the way down there. And I'm like, kind of like worried about these homeless people like fighting next to us. And you're like, just tell me about your biking. You're like, yeah, man, I love biking. And I was like, okay, dude. And I'm like worried about these guys. But yeah, he was bad. worried. I like bikes. I was doing my baseball. Yeah, he was worried because, you know, you know how Venice is yeah. nice. We talk about it all the time. It's zombie land. And yeah. two homeless guys were like fighting, screaming at each other. He's worried something's going to happen. I'm like, dude, just. You know, I'm like, this is what I see when I bike or whatever. So we finally get back to my place, which I don't really remember. I think I was scaring you a little. Yeah, you for sure were scaring me. Because you were going to stay and charge your phone, and I sat on my couch, and you basically were like, I'm out of here. I can't deal with this guy. Oh, no, 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 no. He's like, no, I stayed three hours, but uh, you were (laughs) tripping balls. You were staring at the mirror. My phone, I was like, oh, it's good enough. I just wanted to make sure that I had enough, you know, for the lift and everything. Okay. But, no, it it wasn't a big deal. It was... It was fine. I just I had to dip out. I was tired, you know. Well, yeah. after he left is when things got a little even weirder for me. Oh, you talking about when you got naked and you held me against the corner? And you yes. Let me leave? <laughs> yes. Oh, I 
That's my bad. I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah, yeah no, that don't was really reveal weird. that. So after he don't left, reveal that. <laughs> after he left, for some reason, I got completely naked, like on this couch. Clothes, the the my jacket was here, my pants were there, my underwear. Like I, it was just everywhere, and I got completely nude. And I walked into my bathroom, and I was like six inches from my mirror, staring at my face, and then my. That's the, called tripping. Yes. <laughs> and then you the, were tripping balls. And then the little cabinet mirror, you know, is the second mirror. So I kept going from looking straight at my face to looking to the side and looking back. And at that point, I was like really getting into weird shit on my face, and I kept thought I was seeing things. And I was like, dude, you're losing your fucking mind. You ate too much. You just ate too many edibles. Took too much, man. Yeah. You took too much. I thought about your joke, actually. So then I so then I hopped in bed naked, and I remember I was looking up, and I just kept thinking a shark was going to attack me, and I was like, dude, you got to get yourself under control, bro. And I slept for 14 hours. <laughs> but here's another part. I kept waking up, and I jerked off. I jerked off four times that day. Jesus, that was just... I did not like. That's literally the only part crazy. of the story. I did not need crazy. to know. What? Yeah. I, what? I woke up at like six a.m. to pee, but I was so horny and I masturbated. Then I woke up again at nine a.m. That's when I texted you guys. Like, is weird Twitter still here? Oh, I gotta <laughs> fucking rub one out. <laughs> so I jerked off four times and slept for fourteen hours. Did you like what? load different porn videos that entire time, or was it just like yeah. in the like laying in bed just jerking? Real yeah. Fast. Were you just were you just like fucking mind? Jerkin, yeah, mind like, jerking or porn jerking? Well, a couple were looking at Pornhub, but then a couple were, I was just jerking, dude. <laughs> I, he was trip jerking. He's like, I was staring at the wall. I was jerking off the shark. Shark was just looking at me. I was like, take it all, shark. I didn't realize I'll I was jerking. jerk off right in your mouth, shark. Yeah, I was definitely tripping balls. Like, like, to the like p- I was staring at myself in the mirror, and I was jerking off to the side of my face. And I was jerking <laughs> the, off fu- the-, the funny thing was, when, when EJ left, I was hungry again, which I don't know how, because I'd eaten so much food. I know how. Cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> I said I would. Welcome to the magical I, world of cannabis. I was going to call Mal's Kitchen and order some Chinese food, but then when he but left. But then you were like, I don't know how to use a phone. That, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. When he left, I couldn't figure out how to call them, and I was like, there's no way I can walk across the street. That's where you need Alexa. Yeah. So anyway, that was uh, our Alexa, 420. Alexa, order Domino's. Definitely the highest I've ever been. Holy shit, man. Well, proud of you. <laughs> and you know what sucks? Speaking of, like, being so high you turn into a lunatic, how about that Lance Stevenson? Bro. <laughs> Just trying to segue into some sports here. Yeah. He's a lunatic. Yeah. But he's fun to watch. Maybe yeah. not for you. Yeah, no, he's f- yeah, he's fun to watch because he's a lunatic. Like he actually has crazy eyes. But I don't think I want that guy anywhere my, near my team. Like, I he's he can be good, but he's just so bad. Sorry, I mean, yeah. What is this? This is the loudest water. Fucking Costco. I said, like, why are you squeezing it? Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. I'm still a disaster. Did you did you watch the end of that game? I know the interns was happening here. Yeah, the whole thing with uh, with Jeff Jeff Green. Green, but also throughout the game, he had he had like a couple dust ups, and I feel like he's good for a couple points for the Pacers, like drawing technicals from the other team. But then he also at one point they they inbounded the ball to him, and he just started walking up court with it. The that was that was Ruther entering Dodger Stadium of like <laughs> NBA ball handling. He's like, what? You have to dribble now. Since when? I can't bring this in here. And they were like, dude, you just took 11 steps. Like, the game is on. He's like, "Uh, you can take it to your car, Lance. The thing with Lance Stevenson is he's good. Like, he's good at his moments, right? Like, you can contain him as far as your team and your coach, right? So you can contain him in that moment or he's good for a game or two. But, yeah, he's never been able to pull it together for, like, a seven-game but series. But even, even in this game, like, he he – had the the jump ball to LeBron, which in the end the Cavs won the jump. That was actually a nice play at the end for him to get a jump ball. Sure. But then it like that the play at the end is Lance Stevenson in a nutshell. And let me start by saying, if you're out there and you don't think that a foul at some point during that play should have been called, you just don't understand basketball. Stop watching. You don't know how it works. But like he makes a great play. Yeah. To 
basically uh, get tied up and and have a jump ball, a jump ball, and then takes his hands down from the ball, puts them entirely around Jeff Green's two arms, twists him to the ground like he's wrestling an alligator, and then rolls over him twice, an which alli- is an alligator roll. Yeah, completely illegal. Yeah, in every single sport on the planet. Outside of the UFC, it's a completely illegal move. If a whistle was blown in the NFL, and then a guy grabbed the quarterback like that and took him to the ground and rolled over him twice, that's a penalty. It like the people who are arguing that there shouldn't have been a penalty. I'm gonna put it as clearly as I could possibly put it. Two receivers in football, uh, or a receiver and a running uh, defensive back jump up in the air. Somehow they manage to all have all four of their hands on the football at the same time. They come to the ground. As they come to the ground, they're both they're both their feet hit. The ball goes to the ground. Whistle's blown. Incomplete pass. Then one of them takes the other guy, wraps him up, tackles him to the ground, yeah. rolls over him twice. Yes, there was no pass interference. There was a personal foul after the play. Like, it's 100% of fucking complete and total foul. Yeah. I don't know what anybody was watching. I don't know what Chris Weber was watching. Chris Weber, I was like, Chris Weber should go to Dodgers games with Ruther. This dude is lost. <laughs> this dude's like, uh, before he throws out those, can I take a timeout? And they're like, Chris Weber, you got no timeouts. This isn't a timeout situation. I don't know why you're wearing basketball shorts. Stop it. He, he was like, how is that a foul? How are you on television? It was it was Lance well, Stevenson. Well, hold was, on a second. It was Lance Stevenson. I did Stevenson. watch it. I didn't. I didn't like a foul call. I thought just let him play. They did let him play. They didn't call a foul on the jump ball. He blew the whistle. Jump ball. Lance Stevenson tackled the guy. Now there's a foul. That's that's essentially what happened. I don't even know. I I couldn't believe that there was. I couldn't believe that there was an instant replay situation. Like we all saw what just happened, right? Well, I was a little, I guess I was a little confused because it looked like just both guys were going for it. And at that moment... They were? I just don't like seeing a call there. Yeah. I don't... It's Lance Stevenson in a nutshell. Makes a great play, and within half a second of making that great play, he tackles yeah. a human being on a basketball court. Made a great play, then cost his, cost his own team his own good play. It wasn't a foul, by the way. They didn't call a foul. That's why he had one shot. They called a fucking flagrant, flagrant. one. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't a jump ball. Okay. 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 That makes yeah. sense. I get it. Yeah. I get what you're jump saying. Jump ball. Now. Then he tackled somebody. I I was like, what is the problem here? I couldn't believe the internet. Trevor, what do you think? It was a wild call. It was a wild play. Wild. It was everything. Yeah. Just there, it was glad I checked in with you, EJ. What'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's wild out there, man. It's wild west. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Lance Stevenson, that's just that's his game, you know, yeah, the, the way he plays. And is this what is this kind of shit you brought to the interns? <laughs> Shut their mic off again. We were, we were right in the middle of like just some technical stuff going oh, back oh, and okay. forth to each other. So you, you caught it, you, you caught us at a bad time. You no, didn't, get, like we weren't right, really right, listening. right. You we didn't get to listening. watch it, you didn't get to watch it over and over and over again. Uh, no, well, what I'll say is, I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Now we, 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 come we, clean to start, <laughs> Trevor. Just be like, I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus no, Christ. Wow. I was you know, just going like, to keep the show, keep the show <laughs> moving. Just keep from, it it was a while. It was wild. <laughs> Trevor, what do you think of Lance Stevens? Wow. Life's wild, man. <laughs> Lance Shit, Stevens is shit's, wild. Shit's wild out there. I can't it's, wait to get No the, church in the wild. I'm like, what? This is exactly. Just, we're we're going to get to it at the end of the show. This is exactly why that person called in about you. That's exactly why that person called in about you. We're talking about production stuff. We're I, I, we literally weren't paying attention last minute. I didn't know where we were going. I'm gonna keep the show moving. Keep it. Yeah, it was wild. It's wild out there. I just sat and see it. <laughs> wild out then there. Then we got to go into whole. We no, got to go turn into because, like, because this is what, what I, I didn't see. I know what you're talking well, about. Well, now now the show's definitely not moving along. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. Trevor t- took a shot. You know what I mean? Took a I shot. Didn't, I didn't see got it. Caught. I don't know what you're talking about. I, don't, like, <laughs> Trevor, I could have seen it. Trevor, I I, I, look, you can fuck up all you want. Just honesty is what I want here at the Dirty Sports. Honest. What are we talking about? I don't even know what we're talking about. You know, about. like me, being go. honest and letting all the cops and security at Dodger Stadium know. Honesty's not. 
not always the best policy. That I was yeah. carrying. So are, are those cannabis? <laughs> Copious <laughs> amounts yes, of marijuana. Are. I just, want, awesome. I just want to keep the show moving. Like, yeah, yeah it was wild. Yeah, good, to, yeah, good <laughs> shit. You know, keep it going. Let, let's get back to the cast for a minute. EJ went along with it too. EJ's like, Lance Stevens is a crazy guy. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen here. I knew interns. what you guys were talking about, all right? I, but in Trevor's defense, yeah, I was. we were talking about technical stuff. I love how they're saying technical stuff. Like, these guys are working the U2 world tour. You know, we were dealing with technical stuff. Stuff I'll, I'll end we lost Zoom right, now. Uh, it was right during the shuttle launch. To be fair, <laughs> I'll click on record on the Zoom right now. Yeah. Right? Oh, this guy! Uh, Are you threatening me? <laughs> we, we we need to talk about the the Cavs, man. Outside of LeBron, basically. Yeah. Kevin Love stat line tonight. Kevin Love stinks. Two of ten, and I don't like saying that. I, you know, that's not my yeah. that's not my game. Two of ten, zero of three from three point range. Five points. He stands around a lot. It's it's kind of the new Cavs stand around a lot in general. A lot. And honestly, uh, I think a lot of it is they can't. This is not sustainable. You can't. How many minutes did LeBron James play? Forty six. That's all of them. <laughs> That's all the minutes. Yes. You can't p- play forty six minutes like. He ends up standing around a little bit on both ends because he's playing 46 fucking minutes. You, that's not sustainable. You can't be 33 year old, 33 years old and play 46 minutes a game. In your 15th season. You can't do it. And when he comes up and, you know, brings the ball across half court, passes to somebody and was like, hey, somebody, and then everybody just stands around and watches like, you know, fucking Rodney Hood or Jordan Clarkson, like, try to go one-on-one. Like, all of these guys are, need to be spotted. Kyle Korver was the only guy who played well because he's like, hey, I'm going to come off some fucking picks. I'm going to catch and shoot. It's going to go in. Everybody else just kind of – Kevin Love just stands around. Ke- like, Kevin Love, it just looks – it looks like he doesn't give a fuck. But I know he does. And – that's what's shitty about it. It's like, dude, assert yourself. Be like, yo, Bron, next three trips down the floor, give me the ball. I'm going to fucking do my thing, take a fucking breath, and, you know, let's see what happens. Maybe I get a bucket one of them. Maybe I get a bucket two of them. Yeah. And it, it just, like, they have no offense when LeBron doesn't come down and facilitate the offense. It's sloppy. It's stagnant. That was like a 1990s Eastern Conference basketball game. It was bad basketball for for good stretches. Well, the silver lining is it's 2-2. Yeah. Like so many current NBA playoff series. And that's all that matters for the Cavs. Yeah, but again, LeBron is chasing ghosts here. And his end game is... I was too the other night, yeah. to be fair. <laughs> His end game is the NBA championship. Obviously, everybody, every team's goal is a championship. But, like, the Pacers win this series. That's a step for their franchise. Sure. If the Cavs don't at least make the finals, that's a step back for their franchise. And it's a, it's certainly a knock on, like, LeBron's legacy as far as stupid people who don't understand the game are concerned. But... It's just not sustainable. Well, they right need- now, I'll say this on the show right now. If the Cavs continue to play how they're playing, they will not make the finals. Well, f- no shit. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, they're tied 2-2 with the Pacers. Why are you going to shit on my hot take? I, yeah, is, is this, is this my your hot take? take? My hot take. If the and, Cavs continue to play this type of basketball, no NBA Finals. Yeah, because LeBron James is playing 46 minutes. Everybody else is standing the fuck around. But... Let's look at the other series in the East. I thought for sure Toronto was going to run away with that series. Here they are now, 2-2. So that's going to go at least six. Boston, same thing, 2-2. You know, I just I didn't see any of that stuff happening. But Boston, okay, the Boston uh, Bucks series is basically a well-coached team that's undermanned against a shitty poorly coached team with Giannis 
and some actual fucking NBA talent on. Now, there are guys that are NBA quality talent on the Celtics, but the guys besides Horford that are that are doing most of the damage are fucking rookies. And second year guys like 20 years old, 21 years old. Like that's a testament to what Brad Stevens, how good a coach he is. And they're going to be good for a long time, especially when they get their players back. Yeah. But that's just a matter of and I always say this when you look at NBA playoffs, who's the best player on the court? It's Giannis and it's not close. So that already gives you an advantage. Sure. And the same thing goes for the Cavs series. LeBron's the best player on the court, and it's not close, but no one else is doing anything. He doesn't have Jalen Brown. He doesn't have Jason Tatum. He doesn't have Al Horford. He doesn't have guys surrounding him. Giannis is going is is one guy going against those. So that's like a good series. This LeBron, this is not sustainable. I think they'll beat the Pacers, but doesn't make it out and it hurts them in the long run though if all of the series go seven games that hurts the Cavs more than anybody they need to get out fast the Celtics are just gonna be happy to win a series w- with the injuries they have the Bucks, as young as they are will be happy to win a series the Pacers will win a series now they're not gonna say that they're not gonna say oh, we're just happy to win a series but they gotta they gotta learn advance they're young get playoff experience the only team here I mean, besides the Wizards, who obviously have been around for a while, is the Cavs, the Raptor, and the Raptors. Like, those are the ones that have, like, something to really they're, – they're, it's finals are bust. What's going on with the Raptors? I, look, the Raptors just aren't that dynamic is, is what's going on with the Raptors. And the Wizards have some really good players. Wall, Beal, Oubre, Gortat, like – it's NBA talent, so you know the the gap between them talent wise, the first seed and the eighth seed isn't that great. Have I been critical of Scotty Brooks for four years on the show? Yeah, he sucks as a coach. That's why they're the eighth seed. Who looks at, there? There have been there have been years in the past uh, five that the Wizards were what two seeds, three seeds, four like at least a four. Yeah, they're an eight seed now because. Scotty Brooks is fucking clueless. That's what's going on in the NBA right now. There's a lot of shit coaches with talented teams. And then there's, you know, Brad Stevens or Pop. Like, you know, look, you look at the Golden State Warriors and San Antonio Spurs. Without Kawhi, how, how do they even win a game against that Warriors team? How do you win a game with the guys that they're rolling out there? That's Greg Popovich. Well, he didn't coach it, but right. But it's not about him. It's a like, system, yeah. It's not about him specifically in the huddle. It's about you know them having good basketball. Well, strategy. the Sixers are playing the best ball in the East. Yeah, I mean, look, the last game was close. Could have gone either way. Like that's sure. a, that's a series that could have gone either way. Now they're up three one. Yeah, but think about it this way, and this is the way you always have to think about playoff series. If whoever wins the Next, Pacers-Cleveland game. Whoever wins the next, Boston uh, fucking Bucks. Bucks game. It's 3-2, right? Yeah. If the Heat win, it's 3-2. Like, it's as, it's basically like, yeah, they're up 3-1, but that's been a tough series. That it hasn't, sure. been a, it hasn't been a breeze for them. No, not at all. They had two really good wins, but they also have, you know— Two really close games. Yeah. One they lost and one they won. Yeah. It's 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 I mean, it's not like the Sixers are walking through the fucking, you know, Eastern Conference right now. They're up three one. Everybody else is two two. The parody, man. It's insane. I've never seen it like this. Ever. The only team that hasn't done it is the fucking Pelicans, who we, I mean I mean, Drew Holiday, bro. Forget Drew like Drew Holiday, he's playing great. N- yeah, no. but dude, did, how many, did he have multiple forty-point games that series? Uh, he definitely had a forty-one. I don't know if he had multiple, but he had he had he had thirty-three in another game. No one saw that. Hum- no, coming, but dude. but let's. I mean, Anthony Davis has has made the leap and then left again. Like he's scoring fucking forty-five points a game. 
Anthony Davis is, I mean, that's going to be fun. Him versus the Warriors. Gentry, knowing all their fucking plays. And they're going to have some time off. Yeah. It's going to be I always fun. Know, I always wonder if that helps or hurts a team like that who's playing so well. You know? Uh, yeah. It, it all depends on how they handle it and ha- your coaching. Yeah. And But the great thing for them is they're the one team that's not, like, just a jump shooting bonanza. I mean, Rondo doesn't even have a jump shot. You know, so they're not really. I I, th- I think they're going to struggle less with like needing that rhythm. If if you're talking about the Houston Rockets, I'd be like, yeah, I don't think you want like a bunch of days off. If you're hot and you're making a bunch of threes, I don't think you want to take a week off. Of all the teams, I think it will affect the Pelicans the least. I'm excited. That's that that'll be a fun series. And the longer it goes for the Spurs to hang on, the better that series becomes. I think becomes. the Spurs series is over next game. I just don't see them taking one up in the bay. I just don't. Right. I don't either, but it's already, it's already one more game than the other sure. series. And I don't I don't think they're going to go down without a fight. But I've been surprised in a lot of these series. I thought that the Rockets would sweep the T-Wolves. I didn't. I thought that would be a—I mean, I didn't think it would be a tough matchup, and I still don't think it's going to be a tough matchup. But of, of when we were looking at the draw, I was like, oh, I hope the Rockets— get the Spurs. I hope the Rockets get the Thunder. Uh, the the T-Wolves, it's going to be a grinded out game, and that's what Tibbs does. I mean, that's that's the least points the Rockets have scored in fucking months. Yeah. But it's one game. I, I think that's, I think that'll be a, uh, a 4-1 series as well. Well, Utah now takes a 2-1 lead. Ricky Rubio is, I mean, he's wearing the magic underpants down there in Utah. Yeah. It's that uh, it's that that tattoo and that man bun. He's got the whole thing going. I saw someone call him <laughs> Juan Stockton. <laughs> I love That's good. Him. I is like that, that. Is that weird Twitter or Hispanic no, no. Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I was on Reddit. Man, unbelievable. Who do you like this series though? Jazz Thunder. I like the Jazz. Now you like the Jazz, huh? I do, because I like. Ricky Rubio, I but I don't like his. I couldn't believe that he was playing that well, even when he was doing it. Like he wasn't playing that well. Like it was, it looked like it was in slow motion. And but I like that. Uh, I like that fucking. He's in Westbrook's head. Yeah. Like Westbrook talking about like that shit's gonna stop. I like Donovan Mitchell. You know what he needs to do then? I like Joe Inglis. You, you know what? You know what? You know what Rubio needs to do now to get even more in his head? He needs to outdo Westbrook with his pregame outfit. Like that's how you really get into his head. Ricky Rubio, I noticed last game has he has the he has a giant Timberwolf on his arm. It's like, bro, this is the NBA. You thought you could be a Timberwolf for life? Like he's got the fucking wolf tattoo. Yeah, he wears the sleeve, but he's covering like a fucking giant wolf tattoo. I did not know this. Yeah. Oh. Now he's gonna have to put jazz notes on. That's a bad one. When you get your team, go look at. David. But it's like it's like a fucking full arm too. Yeah, looks like a, uh, like I'm pretty sure. I mean, he wears a sleeve, but I was like, I'm pretty sure that's a wolf, right? That's like something some redneck does. Like, oh look, I'm Marcus Mariota's gonna be the MVP. I'm getting that tattoo, and you're like, well, I don't know if I do that. Yeah, like you get cut at any minute. Yeah. What you need the mic to talk into it, bro? What's up, Marcus Mariota? Yeah, he was, it- he was talking about just redneck NFL fan. Like somebody that was in Tennessee. Like somebody just got one I saw. Rither's doing characters now. So what Marcus Mariota tattoo would you get, though? Just Marcus Mariota? <laughs> somebody what? online last week, it was viral, got a Marcus Mariota fucking MVP tattoo 2018 season. A little bit different Trevor, than just a wolf. Go, wild. A little bit different than wolf. <laughs> but a wolf and Marcus Mariota, a little bit different. I'm just saying he's like a redneck who gets a stupid... Fucking in the moment tattoo. That was and the he's analogy. He's also giving you the finger. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are we, Trevor? Anyway, Jesus Christ, <laughs> what's going on here? Why I didn't grab the mic? It's why I was just blinking guy mean over here. All right, all right. You want to hit the vape pen again? No, I'm good. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> I'm totally good. I've okay. hit the vape pen a couple times. 
Do you want you me to want. get full? Do you guys want me to get fully nude? I doubt it. I didn't like. I don't like those. High, yeah. I don't like those fucking jazz uniforms. What What are we doing here? The upside down fucking sunset. Like I don't. Need, I don't even want to understand them. They gotta go the ones from the eighties, always. Eighties, nineties. Yeah. I like that they went back to that look, though. I just like that they went back to the 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 dark purple, the green, yeah. the yellow, which is obviously New Orleans colors. It's the jazz, but sure. But this fucking desert thing, well, I don't like this. Utah is a beautiful state. It though, is. It's I fantastic. It's been ruined by the Mormons. Yeah, it entirely ruined. I I was just saying that yesterday when I was watching the game. I was watching it with my buddy. I was like, "Have you been to Utah?" And he's like, Gorgeous. "No." I'm like, "It's like fucking." New Mexico meets Colorado meets Arizona meets yes. like California mountains like it's uh, so many beautiful national parks yeah, except fucking near beer. You're right though. You're right. It has a bad stigma. It, it has doesn't a- have a bad stigma. It's got a bad fucking population of fucking cheddar dick Mormons who don't have full strength beer. I just don't get that. Why can't they drink a full beer? Because they're Mormons. But it doesn't make sense. I don't get like what is. It's t- like in Connecticut, what is, what you is, couldn't buy alcohol on Sunday because there was like blue. Dude, laws. the Mormons do not understand. It's just like their whole soaking thing. We've talked about this, right? The soaking thing where you yeah. rest your penis in a girl's vagina, where you rest your penis in two percent beer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but basically, their whole thing is, you know how they ludicrous. Do, yeah, yeah, it's based on magic underpants. You know they how they have multiple wives. You know how the uh, every guy's like just the tip, right? The, the saying, yeah. just the tip. We've it, talked about soaking. Yeah, but my point is their whole lifestyle is just the tip. Two right. or three beer is basically just the tip. You got to get rid of this just the tip nonsense, guys. Go full fledged raw Except dog. Except when it comes to marriage, then they go eleven tips. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, stop fucking children and marrying them. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. And get a regular uniform back. But you're right; it really is a gorgeous state, and people yeah. don't, people don't realize that because the minute you say Utah, they think. Soaking and two, three beer and sixteen-year-old wives and all this weird shit. You think Ricky Rubio has a has a is it a harem? Is that what they call him? A harem of fucking. I mean, Mormons? it's not what they call him in Utah, but yeah. A harem. It's like when you have multiple women. Like kings used to have a harem. Utah, they just call them wives. Yeah. But I t- but Yoshi, we talked about this last episode. There are a lot of attractive women there. Yeah. I don't I don't know what it is. If their chicks are just down, like if you're a, if you're into soaking, you move to Utah. I don't know. I don't I don't know what it is, but it does make me it's the blonde hair, the blue eyes. Yes. It does make me root against them though. The Mormon shit. Yes. Even though no, nobody on the team is Mormon. I know, and it sounds so. Even though Quinn Snyder is a. Coke addicted fucking co ed fucker. Yeah, by the way, I have to apologize. Some dirtball tweeted, and apparently he said that on a phone call earlier, an earlier episode, and I played it as a troller moron. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Yes. And then your buddy told you. Yes. And see, it's, I mean, that's Ruther. And like we talked about Lance Stevenson in a nutshell. That's Ruther in a nutshell. Like fucking dirtballs are stupid. And they shouldn't be trusted. They're fucking trolls or morons. I didn't say all dirt balls are stupid and shouldn't be trusted. I'm not treating them like fucking McCarthyism with fucking communism, bro. Your fucking EJ pops his head out. Oh, oh, is it? Is it? Whatever. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna go there. Pop in, Trevor. What do you? You gotta hit that vape pen again. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking I about? Wasn't, I, was, I was just popping my head over. I was not saying that you said that or anything like that. I was just, I wanted to look at you. I couldn't see you behind the light. <laughs> there, I hit the vape pen. You happy? I do like this pen, though. It's a nice little pen. I got $6.30 rewards points towards my next purchase. Killing the game. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Do you have great. a rundown over there? What's happening? I, you said the interns didn't have any dead air. We have, we have we've had five minutes of dead air already. We haven't had any dead air, Prano. In fact, the next thing I want to talk about is how great our seats were because we got them off SeatGeek. We did get great seats, and we did get them on SeatGeek. Third row, like I said, right field. Yep. Purchased them day before. Who found those tickets? You did. And I said, go to SeatGeek, use promo code DIRTY. I've already used mine. 
and and this is the seat. This is the section. I found it. I put it. What I always do, I put in absolutely the most I want to spend, and then I just take a look at the map, and I was like, boom, those look real close. Yeah. Zoomed in, third row. Took a look at the view. It said row B, but I was like, this is just an extra row. It was row double A, A, B. I was like, third row still works. Let's do it. Let's do it. And we get twenty dollars off. It's fantastic. Which you can't even beat. So, Dirtballs, you can also take advantage of this great offer that we have. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter our promo code DIRTY today. That's D-I-R-T-Y. That's promo code DIRTY for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. And don't forget, this is not limited to sports. Any sort of live event, you can use promo code DIRTY. So take advantage of this today. $20 off your first I'm on the. Uh, I'm on the verge of announcing the... Uh I, I haven't decided. I'm still workshopping the name. I don't know if it's gonna be the the ballpark and ballparks and bits tour or the punchlines and pitch, pitch counts tour. But uh, I'm about to announce all the games I'm going to. But for sure, I'm going next weekend in San Diego. So if you're a dirt ball, get some Sunday tickets. Mets Padres San Diego. Come down and uh, come down and watch Prano watch baseball. <laughs> I think we should do a Ruth or Stone tour at baseball parks. Where I just eat a bunch of edibles and we see how and many parks you can get arrested at for trying to bring them in with you. Yes, yes, I think this is a great Not idea. Not everybody is the guys in L.A. who see fucking edibles all the time. You did that in shit in Philly, you'd still be in a jail cell. Yeah, it's a good They'd point. Be like, Fuck you, you fucking cunt! You can't bring cannabis in here, you fucking hippie. Next thing you're gonna want to fucking white and black people living together. Get in a cell. Yeah, it's a good point. I'm very lucky that I live in L.A. That shit ain't going to work. We're going to cover you in cheese whiz and then feather you. <laughs> you want to talk a little baseball? Sure. How's this guy's name pronounced? This was the no-hitter. Sean Manea? Did I do it correctly? Got it. Nailed it. It's that weed, man. It makes me smarter. Sean Manea tosses a no-hitter against the Red Sox, but it was like a bizarre no-hitter. What was bizarre about it? There were some questionable calls. You saw that, uh, right? The only the only questionable call I saw wasn't even that questionable. I mean, the the blooper into the outfield. That's, I mean, well, actually, they give him an error on that blooper, right? Yeah, and then the guy running out of the base path who was called out. Oh, that's he's fucking out. Okay, he's fucking out. the The blooper was the the questionable one. What inning was the blooper in? Do you I've, remember? I have no clue. I that, don't know. That's I think that, that's a questionable call when. Depending on what inning it is, gotcha. they give if they give him a fucking error because it was like the seventh on the bloop. That's a little bit questionable. I'm a, I'm of the opinion that bloopers. I mean, that shit can be tough. This guy's having a pretty good year though, right? Yeah, I mean, and for the A's too. And they're playing. And, they're playing good baseball. Yeah, and he fucking no hit the Red Sox. That's what I'm saying. Teams. The best team. Yeah. right now. That was in Oakland. I believe it was. In so Oakland. four people watched the game. Yeah. Do they have the worst attendance? They do. Well, <clears throat> I, have a, I have a friend from Oakland from there. He sent me a text the other day, like a week ago. I can't remember the exact date. They did a game where the game was free. Yeah, I saw that. Their 50th it was anniversary free. or something like that. Just showed up to the stadium and you got in for free. This is some high school baseball. That's shit, how bad. The they, no, 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 no but that, they, they charge. They charge to get into a high school baseball game. No, but hold on, hold on, hold on. That that was that was an event. That was a special it was, event. It was, it was a promotional a, it, event, but it, still. Yeah. Name another stadium that does a free game. I mean, seriously, though. Yeah. No other, none of the other baseball teams this year are doing a free game. But because Oakland always looks more empty than it really is because they're in a fucking football stadium. So they opened it up, and they were like, I mean, it's actually smart because apparently 200,000 people, you had to, like, sign up for tickets. You didn't just get to show up. 200,000 people signed up for tickets. Is that what it was? Yeah. So if all those people come, I mean, granted, they're not all going to come because it's free, so you have yeah. no incentive to come. But if half of those people come or 80,000 people come and they all buy a hot dog, you just made more money than if 30,000 people bought tickets. Yeah. So I guess one way of looking at it, right? Well, I will. I want to see how many people attended this game. But I'm sure I – know, I know no one goes to games in Oakland, but it also looks more empty than it is. I'm going to be there on May 9th watching the defending world champion Astros take on the A's in a day game. I don't know. I don't like how they don't list the box in the box score. There's nowhere for attendance right here. There usually is. You there, probably just can't find it. There's not. 
Anyway. We got the intern on it. The intern is on it. Yeah. Sean Manea. Is that his name? Like Trevor, what's the, uh, what's the attendance? Like, it's wild out there, bro. <laughs> it's fucking wild. <laughs> <laughs> what, do we, what do we want? I'm trying to look up the attendance for this no hitter. No hitter. Saturday's game. Oh, for just that. Yeah, just that game. <laughs> Trevor, <laughs> see the, the struggle. Dude, I wish Trevor was on camera like this. He's like, "Oh, what? Are, what are we looking for?" Uh, just. <laughs> Do you get hangovers? No, I want to talk about this real quick, though. I had a, an intense edible hangover. I didn't feel he full normal until right now. <laughs> uh, I didn't feel he fell. He fell until basically last night. I don't. Don't you get groggy the next day, man? I actually the the one of the reasons that I don't eat edibles often and I don't smoke at night is because I can't fall asleep if I'm high at all unless I've been drinking, and so I get groggy because I don't sleep. But usually, if I get a regular seven eight hours after smoking or taking edibles, then I'm fine. Yeah. But if I take an edible like that night. We were crushing beers, so I was able to just pass out, and I woke up the next day fine. But usually, like, if I take an edible at 7 p.m., especially since that stuff hits you later, I'm fucking – I'm up till 4. Yeah. And then it's not like I'm – then, of course, you're always groggy but, when you sleep but, till noon. But you don't want to – like, it makes me want to sleep. Yeah, it does not do and that just kind of touch myself, apparently. Okay. I mean, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, like – I'm glad EJ got out of here in time. Like, like I, I, I low key could have gone weird Harvey Weinstein just masturbating in front of him. Like, I'm kind of glad he got out of here because you never know. I mean, I'm just sex. saying that the kid EJ is this your second show here? Uh, third, third show yeah. here. He basically was hired last week. Yeah, and then he walks you home one night. And there's a lot of talk about masturbating, and now he's already got a show on the network. Like, I mean, talk about a casting couch. Should I? Should I be worried that this was? It took me fucking six months to get my yeah, own you show. Sunk that dick, dick, yeah. Trevor. Well, <laughs> hold on. EJ's already here. He hold just walks in. We got a show together. This shit. We have not confirmed that they have their own show. This well, is I mean, the, they've recorded a show. This is in the they pilot a, season. Yeah, they have a pilot. This is in the pilot season. If if I trust the dirt balls, which I do. Just in spite of Andy Ruther, we'll get our own. Look at him! Look at our own show. Yeah, just so Andy Ruther is pissed that we have what our do you own mean show. In spite? Yeah, you don't want us to have our own show. <laughs> what the fuck do I oh, preach yeah. all the uh -oh. time? Uh oh, <laughs> uh -oh. he's going go. poop sock on you. <laughs> don't argue. Go. He'll get up and fucking threaten you. Content is king. Content is king. This is. I, I thought we were content right here. We're just gonna rile this all up. That was like WWE promotions. Dirtballs, don't let us get our own show. Yeah. Don't let EJ and I get our own show. Because <laughs> Ruther's going to be pissed. Look at him sitting there on the couch. Go to the YouTube channel, by the way, at the Dirty Sports YouTube channel interns. so you can see them. I love how he's questioning me. Who is loading their own show tonight? <laughs> My ass when y'all fucking leave. I'm just saying. Of course it's going to be a show. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, I don't know about them having a show. <laughs> Fucking Trevor just mind gamed you. Oh, I'll show you a show. Not only are you going to have a show, you're taking over this show. I'm the intern now. What? Can I be honest, though, man, in a weird low key way? I did enjoy sitting in Trevor's chair. You did. You were like a kid on Christmas, man. I was enjoying watching them do a pre show. I didn't speak once. No, but you I good. even if I if I if they needed to hold the mics up, I, I motioned to them. I was basically playing director, producer. I didn't talk once. I let them do their thing. You taking notes? No, Googling you were props stuff for them because there were a couple times we even like mentioned him, like oh Ruth there, blah blah blah. No, and I think they nope. thought I was just gonna pick up the mic. Yeah, but nothing. I actually put my mic on zero, which was basically saying I'm gonna I, I'm gonna step away. This is I'm gonna let the kids grow even, up a I, little. I was saying. But when I was walking up with Trevor, too, I think maybe a nice little walk for you, get a little fresh air before we do the dirty sports. Everything. Almost like you can come in the way I do, refresh, just sit down, everything's set up, just, you know, clear the mainframe. Ruther would never leave the smut jack no, to, no. to our own <laughs> devices. <He> yeah. <laughs> Bro, I start pacing. You could have just ended that as Ruther will never leave the smut jack. Bro, I start pacing my apartment two hours before we go live. Yeah. <laughs> Shadow boxing like Maddie. <laughs> I'm like just dusting. Brandon Bell today. I want to. That's for the YouTube exclusive. 
<laughs> Are you Maddie over there? <laughs> that's Maddie's. That's Maddie's uh, pre uh, stand up fucking workout. All right, Maddie, you're on next. You're doing Sam. He's like, <laughs> it's like an old Mark Wahlberg video, except his fucking elbows are tied to his side. <laughs> I love Maddie. So Brandon Bell today. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> set a record with 21 pitches during his at bat. Yeah. 16 fouled off pitches. Fantastic. And a fantastic at bat, honestly. He, he got out though. Yeah, but a fant- first of all, you 21 pitches. It's crazy. He only swung at strikes. He only took balls. Like he like it was a fantastic at bat. If you look at the at the box, he might not only took balls. He might have taken he might have taken the first strike. I don't remember. But he the three pitches out of the fucking zone, he let go. Three two. I mean, it was I think the ninth pitch before he was even at a full count. He fouled off fucking twelve more pitches. The exact count went foul, ball. Swinging strike, so we're at two and one there. Yep. Then foul. One and two. Yep. Then we're at foul, foul, ball, foul, foul, ball, foul, 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 fly out. Yeah. A fantastic at bat. That's a pro hitter right there. And he he only swung at fucking strikes. Fantastic. Or borderline strikes. I looked. I watched it. All right. Well, well thanks, Ruther. <laughs> well, 11, 11 foul balls in a row. Yeah. Is what, what we're hit. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he got out. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I know it does damage the pitcher's pitch count. Yep. But, but also, you're seeing the ball. Like, that's a good at bat. That's a productive at bat. You know, I was watching Scherzer the other day warm up. I'm pretty sure I could hit a ball off him. I am 100% <laughs> be, what, what, that you cannot. What do we think? I don't think you could I don't think you could make contact if you had 50 swings. I don't think you could foul a ball off. 50 swings? No. You couldn't foul a ball off in 50 swings. I you bet if I got high I could do it. I bet you could. I bet that I, would make it worse. I'd see even better. <laughs> I think you'd foul one off. No, nope, he wouldn't. I he think ab- you 50 or we give him 50 swings? 50 swings. Yeah, you'd get it would lucky. take him. First of all, uh, here's why I know it wouldn't. Scherzer or Kershaw, who I got a better shot of fouling a ball off. I neither. Think- oh, uh, Kersh- <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kershaw, because you're a righty and he's right. So f- he's lefty. He's lefty. Yeah, because Scherzer's a righty, you would have a harder time. Oh, yeah, off him. gotcha. It would take you. It would take you nine pitches to get if you just do fastballs for you to go like. I, how early do I have to swing? <laughs> Then he'd fucking throw you a curveball, and you'd go hide in the dugout. And then once you thought you got that, then he'd fucking throw you a chain, and you'd be like, I don't know what's happening. Honestly, he probably shouldn't even throw you a chain. That slider would be a little scary. Yeah, the slider would be scary as fuck. He'd probably, if he was smart, and he, he is, <laughs> he's a fucking fantastic <laughs> pitcher, he'd only throw you pitches like hands high, and you'd swing at all of them. And or probably not, and you would never, you would never fit probably go in, go 50. in the whole yeah. entire time. Fifty, no way. I think you'd get lucky. I think you'd make nope. contact on one out of fifty. No way. I'm not, I'm not saying he's gonna square it up, but he'll. Max Scherzer, if you're listening to this, we'd love to do this. This would be great content for the Dirty Sports Network. I, and by the way, I would go out in full football equipment too, because he throws. You know, I don't want to get, I don't want to take another denting. Literally, helmet, shoulder pads. It's a Cy Young one. He's not going to hit you. Well, you never know. You never know. He's got a weird eye. I've got a weird eye. He <laughs> might have issues with that. I'm just saying. So no out of – okay. Okay. Now I almost want to know who could I hit a baseball off? Like, like what is that where we have to take this? I mean, you could you, – you'll make contact against that. You're not going to make contact on Matt, uh, Max Scherzer. Okay. You might make contact uh, in 50 pitches against a big leaguer. Uh, you're you're definitely not putting a fucking – you're definitely not getting a hit against any big leaguer. What about Hello Kitty? She was featured at our game the <laughs> other day. Hello Kitty threw out the opening pitch. Bartello Colon might try to stink a fastball by you. You might be able to square that up. 
Dude, he's still oh, throwing still eight mid eighties. Yeah, fucking mid eighties. You know. Yeah. No, he you wouldn't. Like, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just trying to help him. Dude, up. how about this? Yeah. I throw in the fucking low seventies. You, I, you'd be lucky to make solid contact. Well, probably. I don't know. I haven't played baseball. It's like, it's I, like I know. That's why we're talking about you hitting off of Max Scherzer. Uh, well, he embarrasses major leaguers. Yeah, well, I'm not a major leaguer. I, we've established that. I'm, I'm fucking Andy Ruther. And again, Aiden Ed, you know, I feel good. Some edibles in me. 50 pitches in a row. I think you could foul one off. That's all Just I'm trying one. to do. Just foul one. one. You're off. not going to square one, but you could foul one off. I think, pitches, I think if Max Scherzer's goal was you don't make contact in 50 pitches. And, uh, and uh, granted, they have to be strikes. You can't just throw them over into the fucking, you know, into the stands. But swinging or called strikes, I bet you if that was his goal, I bet you he could make you not hit 50 pitches. Dude, you, you're probably he, right. He'd throw fucking, he'd throw fucking dirt ball sliders and you'd swing at every single one of them. Do I have to swing at balls? No. I, could, I bet you he could throw you 50, 50 strikes. strikes before you fucking make contact. Ah. See, I think you'd foul one off. I think you'd get – and it, it would take the littlest centimeter just to, you know – Dude, I'm telling you, it'd be 10 pitches for him to acclimate to the speed. 10 pitches, get to the speed. And then – Another 10 If Max Scherzer was smart, he would throw 10 pitches. 10 I'm saying, like, on his 40th pitch, I think Ruther has seen it by his then. His 40th pitch, he still doesn't understand how curveballs work, yeah, sliders yeah, work, change-ups work. I'm, I'm, I'm looking I'm within mentally 50 challenged, pitches though. he can get lucky. God, dear God. I'm not, dude, I don't know if I would make contact on Max Scherzer in 20 pitches. I don't know if I would. Yeah, but 50, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Athletic I understand. I, I would understand what to look for spin. I don't, like. I understand baseball. 25 pitches, you make contact. Yeah, maybe. Let's set it up. Max Scherzer. <laughs> that one has been tossed out there, buddy. Let's fucking do it. Me, you, Maxi. We'll do it in Venice Beach. Yeah, we'll do it wherever you want, actually. I'll, I'll, next time you come out this way, although you've already done it once this season, so you're not going to come back out. Uh, San Diego, I'll fly to D.C. We want to go to an old baseball field somewhere in some city. I'll be there. Let's make it happen, Scherzer. I don't know. I don't know why you're asking a major leaguer to meet you at some abandoned <laughs> ballpark. <laughs> He'll go behind the tracks, the old rail yard. This is a fucking scene out of the natural. <laughs> Can we talk about this Adrian Broner guy? Sure. Oh my god. I thought you sent me it. I watched it all. I thought the dude had to win the fight. He didn't even win the fight. He did. No, it was a draw. It, oh, he didn't. I got didn't pay attention. Take the draw. So it was a draw. Um, cool. I'd I just wonder who's going to get half of these references. No one in this room. That's for sure. I was working on technical shit. I wasn't listening. <laughs> so, here's the thing. We obviously don't really talk boxing or UFC, but I got home last night, and I saw this dude was trending, and I started watching these videos, and I could not stop laughing. And then I saw Bill Simmons' tweet, which Bill Simmons' tweet basically summed it up. I don't have Bill Simmons' tweet exactly in front of me, but he said... His post-game interview is like a Jamie Foxx SNL character, like how he would play a boxer. Right. Which I thought is a great way to sum it up. That's what he was doing. He was trying to be funny, but it was like— I mean, uh, Also, that's the most Simmons tweet of all time. He picks a random actor. <laughs> if Jamie Foxx were an yeah. SNL character. Not this guy's an SNL character. But if this guy had been a black guy on 902 and 0, this is how he would have talked. <laughs> He was trying to be funny, but he was also trash talking, but like blatantly offensive funny. I don't think he was trying to be funny. I think he was just straight up. I think that's it. That's the dude. And He's the, a lunatic. Lunatic. All right, let's do it. So, I've got my ear and my headphones on now. All right, Trevor. So let's let's play this. Uh, let's play this. This is now. This is just so you guys who, if you didn't, I see can't it. see weird Twitter behind the lights. Do you have headphones on back there? Oh, he if, you, if you didn't see it, this is uh, Jim Gray interviewing. I love Jim Gray not wanting to give him the mic. Too. Me too. That was great. Anyway, so this is Jim Gray interviewing him after the fight. I be, I, man, let me see the mic. Hey, I be, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause it. Yeah, you said hold on. 
No, that was the guy. Oh, my head. <laughs> Tra- I heard you coming in that. I thought that was you saying, hold on. Okay, Trevor. Okay, I'll hold on. No, speaking of hold on, hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. You thought that. I was talking to him down the hallway as a black guy. I, I was I was listening through the headphones. That was saying, Adrian Broner. This is how this is how Stone Trevor is all the time. <laughs> no, Trevor's, I'm looking at time. Hold on, hold on. Stone. Hold on. Yeah, you are. Hold, Trevor, you just thought the audio from Adrian Broner was Prano, bro. <laughs> it's coming all in different. Bro, the other day when we it's were, wild out there, bro. Hold on. When we arrived it's at Dodger West. Stadium, you guys will love us. This is a Trevor, a great Trevor story. When we arrived at Dodger Stadium. We're all out of Trevor's <laughs> yeah. car. Trevor's car alarm is going off, and he's in the car. <laughs> no, that, that you're right. This is exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> he's like, wait, that, that's my car? Trevor yeah, walks, that's the car you're in. He walks out of the car. I go, turn off your car alarm. He goes, that was my alarm going off? <laughs> he was in the car and didn't know his own car alarm was going off. There was literally the car next to me. I thought it was both. I thought it was one of us going off. I, I was like, oh, I'm going to take it. It's theirs. It's their car going off. Blinking guy meme. Okay, let's get to this. All right. I'll be hot, man. Let me see the mic. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I beat your ass. Look at his face. It looked like I beat him with they beat my um, Martin Luther King with, man. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I'm an honest man. We went at it for 12 rounds. That's what we go at it. That's gay. We can do it again. That's go okay. at it. It's gay. We can do it again. I beat your ass. We can do it again. I beat your ass like you stole something. I beat your ass like you got suspended from school. I beat your ass like you stole my bike from Chad, nigga. We can go get some more if you want. You, you heard me. You bruised up. I'm ready to fight right now, fool. Come on, man. You need Your face cut down. up. You need peroxide. You need, you need peroxide down. and alcohol. You need, a you need peroxide down. alcohol. You need peroxide and alcohol. Boy, your face on 6 9 right now. You a blood. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know what All that right. was. Well, can, can somebody translate that one for me? I think it's – God, this is white guys trying to translate. Yeah. I think it's uh, – I followed everything after that. I heard him say, yeah, peroxide and alcohol. I think he's saying his face is bloody, so he's like a blood, like the gang member. I don't know. He's like, your face is on 6 9 You a blood. You a blood, I think, is what he's yeah, saying. I have no idea what he said. What was his reference to Martin Luther King Jr.? Uh, he said something about uh, you. You look like you got beat like Martin Luther King. You know what I love though? This is what I love too. I was looking around at Twitter. All these fucking sports reporters are taking this so serious. Like it's a boxer, guys. You think football players are dumb? Like if you if you had a scale of dumb athletes, you got to put boxers below football players, right? Or probably similar. Yeah, I mean, there's just such a wide range in football, right? Yeah, but, but boxers. I mean, if they're not dumb when they start, they're dumb by the end. But that's my point. This guy, how many big ass knocks to this guy's head has he taken? And you see these reporters. Like I saw this one female black reporter. She's like, "This is so offensive. This does terrible damage for black rights for a black athlete to be making MLK Jr. jokes." You're like, dude, he's a fucking boxer. Everybody's just like. It, I, oh. Why is anybody giving this guy like this? What's his name? Eight. His name's Adrian Broner. Yeah. When you sent me that last night, you're like, you see this Adrian Broner thing? I thought it was a surfer. I thought it was, I thought you were talking about the guy from the Pianist. I was like, what did Adrian Brody do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then the end it gets really funny again. Uh, can you fast forward it, Trevor? You got us to two two thirty seven. Point blank period. The early rounds. Vargas won the fight through a tremendous amount so more punches. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But then in the middle rounds, hold on, hold on, sir. But then so in the middle rounds, you turn things around. What turned the fight around and enabled you to connect with your left so often in those middle rounds? I was connecting with rights too. Was you watching? Did you, you got cataracts, your eyes fucked up? Did you no, see? No, they're not. <laughs> you want to answer the question. What changed things from the early rounds to those I got warmed rounds? up. I got warmed up. Hold on, stop it for a second. I do want to give Jim Gray some credit. Because he's he's trying to roast him. He's like, yeah, you got cataracts or something, man. Like like he's in the belly room comedy. They're like, you got look at this motherfucker, this old wild ass with his cataracts, can't see. And like he's expecting the crowd. Like who's who's his audience in this point? Dude, he just got beat up too. I mean, he's. I don't think he's thinking like his audience. Well, I think he's just a lunatic. Yeah. Then he throws shade at, at Mexican people, which is pretty funny here. The last part. On point blank period. Were you a different fighter with Kevin Cunningham in your corner? Did things, the big changes that you had looked for, were you able to enact them? You're a different fighter with that different suit on. Did things change when you changed that old ass suit? I don't have any different trainers or any different tailors. Was your trainer a help this evening? Um, of course. Um, I want to thank Coach Kevin Cunningham, and, and I want to give the biggest thanks to him and the biggest one of the biggest thanks to my original coach, Mike Stafford, for understanding 
I needed to do something different and just stay in my corner. So, you know, um, I got to give a good thanks to that. Final thought, would you like to fight Vargas again based on this draw? Hell yeah, but, but let's go to my town. You know, you know, I, I want to fight him where I'm from. There's hella Mexicans and shit in here. Everybody <laughs> keep booing me and shit. They want rice and chicken. I want some <laughs> motherfuckers that want some conies around me. <laughs> from Cincinnati? All right. Adrian, thank you. That's what I'm confused. Conies? Where's he from? That's know. New York, right? Like Coney's That's what I like, thought. Coney Island? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was t- I thought he was t- I thought that was a fucking. I still don't even know what it is. You talk about cheese conies and shit. Yeah, Mexicans with their. He goes, they had a Mexicans in here. Yeah. They want rice and chicken. He is from Cincinnati. You called yeah. it. Well, because who the fuck says conies? <laughs> He's from He's Cincinnati. Referencing Coney Island, he'd been like, I want some Nathans. He's from Cincinnati. Oh, he's not my favorite athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Game changer, bro. I ever thought you already knew that. He's dropping conies in there, bro. Brona grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Started boxing at the age of six. He said that the sport saved him from life on the streets. <laughs> bro. This is my guy. This is my guy right here. I got it. You're welcome for that. You're welcome for referencing... You're you're welcome for waking you up to a a blatant reference to your own your home city. And he had like a southern boy accent kind of too. It's fucking Kentucky. Yeah, he's like a he's like a northern Kentucky type of guy. Well, that's our boxing for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's about all we're gonna cover. You want to talk a little NFL? Sure. Not much to talk about. They did release the schedules. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to say about that. Um. No, uh, other than, you know, I was hopeful about my Giants. Obviously, like, I think we were uh, more talented than our three wins last year. Um, you know, obviously, we won 11 games. Our schedule is difficult as shit, and I now think the Giants are going to be bad next year. First seven games are fucking atrocious. I am working on maybe trying to go to uh, week three in Houston before it turns into a total debacle. So I'm going to go sleep in Bill O'Brien's office. <laughs> Well, the Rams have a tough schedule, too, but I'm excited because they get five games on TV this year, national TV. So so the NFL is trying to prop up that L.A. thing. Yep. But I was looking. Well, they probably prop up the good teams, too. Yeah. The poor fucking Chargers, man. The Chargers, who no one already gives a shit about here, don't have a home game from week six to ten. So basically saying, oh, nobody gives a shit about you. You guys are on the road all the fucking time. Well, that means they open with a lot of home games. They close with a lot of home games. So that's nice. And they play each other this year at the yeah. Coliseum. Yeah. That'd be great. Which I'll be really curious to see how that breaks down. It'll be one-third Rams fans, one-third Chargers fans, one-third Raiders fans. <laughs> and the Shabellis. <laughs> did you see the Niners got five primetime games? The Niners did, the too. The Niners got five. So, like, they're banking on Garoppolo yeah. being – being good otherwise that is a big bank <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm Fuck just it, hot take day bro, is, that is a big bank i i'm <laughs> i'm just that's not I a, that's fully, not a phrase I, I fucking haven't. scrooge mcduck that's a big bank <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bank <laughs> this is yeah, a bank this is a bank <laughs> there's a reference nobody got uh <laughs> I'm still uh, maybe I'm still groggy from uh, <laughs> from Friday because my show went awful last night too. Yeah. Probably you handed your weed over to the security <laughs> guard, <laughs> so I imagine you still part of your groggy. Unbelievable. What? Where's your Where was your show last night? The hostel, dude. So what would you do in this situation? I'll just. Oh boy, here we go. No, I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> I would have left the the cannabis in my pocket. That's what I would have done. <laughs> So I'm taking my shot with the metal detector. You know, I normally do crowd work and I'm doing crowd work to start the show as the host, blah, blah, blah. I asked the dude, what brings you to L.A.? He says, I don't want to talk about it. Well, I would have definitely left at that. I did. <laughs> I did. OK. And then he spoke up and he goes, well, actually, I came here to die. And you can tell he's being serious, like cancer. How old was he? He's older. OK. And I've learned from another audience member, they're like, yeah, you know, he's even from Alaska. He's got cancer of this, of that. So he said, I came here to die. So I was like, ooh, 
I don't know. I forget what I said. Whatever I said was not. I just didn't know what to do. That's by the way. That's the that's the comedy audience member equivalent of handing over your cannabis as you walk into a <laughs> ballpark. Hey, bro, you might not have gone to a comedy show before, but uh, that really killed everything. Yeah. So the whole room, of course. Yeah. And it was packed. It yeah. was Dead silent. And then it gets even weirder. We move on past. I would have probably been like, well, I usually say I killed, but <laughs> we move on past that. Yeah. I'm doing my first actual joke of the night. Right before I get to the punchline. He kills himself. <laughs> <laughs> he, He's like, I already hate this guy. He yells out. I was just doing a joke about my mom. He yells out, your dad. And then the whole room gets silent. And then he continues to yell shit out. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, dude, you're going to die. Everyone feels you're sorry die, for clown. you. die, clown. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone feels sorry for you. But I can't just roast you. Yeah. So, like, what do you do in that situation? Uh, I think you can roast him. What? Because I was this close to saying, uh, if you only would have died a day sooner. Well, I don't know if I would have done make that this way. Show go- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would have been my go-to line, but man, I just didn't know what to do in that situation. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. I, I've never been in that situation where, like, I yeah. don't know what to do. And the comics were like, "Dude, I don't know what I would have done either." And I'd the- have been like, "Take your death heckle to the comedy store, bro. <laughs> I don't even get paid here." And then, at, well, I did make a joke. I said, uh, I said, <laughs> I said, I'm dying up here faster than this guy or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was getting really dark with it. Yeah, anyway. Well, apparently I played it all wrong. Like, was he staying at the hostel? Yes. I mean, what the fuck? I know. <laughs> this guy. This I, guy's Mr. Bad Decision. I know. This is like, this is like that Nicolas Cage movie, except, like, not cool at all. He's like, oh, I'm staying at a hostel. I'm going to a fucking free comedy show. He's like, is it true that you guys have mini bags of Fritos in here? Because I'm, uh, this is my last day on earth. It's like, bro, go get a fucking steak and some lobster. If you want to see comedy? Go to the Improv. I know. And then his buddy, when I was talking stay about, stay at the fucking Four Seasons. Stay at the, f- Jesus Christ, stay at not the hostel. Yeah, not a youth hostel in Santa yeah. Monica. Don't ruin the comedy show, bro. Jesus. Hey, Christ. what are you guys doing here? Oh, uh, we're backpacking around uh, the U.S. How about you? He's like, I'm here to die. I'm like, <laughs> fuck yeah, awesome. Do I get a uh, di- do I get a discounted rate if the dude I'm living with fucking dies in my room? <laughs> well, you know, uh, Kevorkian costs a hefty penny, so I figured I'd stay at a hostel. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I basically would have done that the whole time. <laughs> that would have been a good bit. I would have enjoyed that. I would have thoroughly enjoyed that. I roasted him when he left the room. That's what I did. <laughs> it was pathetic, and I and I waited because there was a bunch of young teenage French girls there, and then they left, and then he left with his buddy after whatever comic it was. Then I made the joke: his dying wish was to fuck underage French girls, which then the crowd laughed at that. Yeah. But then I continued to just hammer home dead jokes, which, as the usual Ruther move, the crowd's like, "All right, bro, you're just an <laughs> asshole." Now. Yeah. Like we hate you. It was funny the first time. You want to get to some calls? Yeah, let's do it. I just took my headphones off. Did you see this this Jay Feely picture, by the way? I did. People got to fucking calm the fuck down. It's, it's pretty, pretty funny. gives a shit. Yeah. It's pretty funny. I thought it was hilarious. I, also, I follow him, and if I didn't even open the picture. Do you know what I mean? Like, I actually saw the picture, but then I was like, okay, whatever. Like, he's posing with his fucking, posing with his daughter's prom date. And then, like, it came back around, like, oh, he's holding a gun in the picture. He was holding it fucking down below. Like, we can't joke anymore. Can't joke about fucking guns are now not even. You can't even joke about guns anymore. It was his daughter's boyfriend in, like, the last year and a half. It wasn't even a random kid. Who cares? Who cares if it was a random kid? Oh, well, I don't know if you heard, but some people have shot, gotten shot in high schools recently. Yeah. Great. People get shot all kinds of places. Now, so all gun jokes are off limits? Am I, am I allowed to do finger guns anymore? Can I uh, can I give you one of those? Or is that, where, where do we draw the line? It wasn't loaded. Didn't have a clip in it. He wasn't fucking pointing it at the kid. It was a fucking joke. I agree, man. People have a goddamn sensitivity. It's get off the fucking internet. They remove everything offends you. Get off the internet. Get off the internet. I'm offended. He had a gun. 
Jesus Christ, no one asked you to follow him. You you had to click on the picture. I saw the picture and didn't see the gun because I didn't open the picture. You had to work to see the gun in that picture. It doesn't reference it in the tweet. It doesn't say hashtag I'm holding a gun. You have to work to see this picture. I, I, I it's just like I can't deal with the sensitivity of people. Uh, and then the comic told the guy who was here to die to die, and so I'm suing the hostel. It's like fuck. Who cares? I can like I I. I I want the other side of this. Like, I want somebody play devil's advocate. Weird Twitter. Take the mic. I'll say I can do it. What? what yeah. What? Like, I, I want. Here's I want the, devil's advocate here. Here's the other side. A guy who I think he currently works for NBC. Sure. Uh, it's it's insensitive to who. Look, I'm not saying I agree. I'm trying to play devil's advocate. Yeah, I know. It's insensitive to everything that's going on right now in our country, all the shootings, especially the high school shootings. And So guns it, are— He did that, it. Uh, uh, it's his daughter's prom. It's a high school event. That's what the other side's going to say. Well, first of all, it was not at a prom. He didn't bring a gun to the prom. He had a gun on his own property. Yeah. He, the, the fucking kids are willingly— Voluntarily posing with the gun, the kid who he's quote unquote threatening is fucking cracking up. So, so now are all is is anything referencing a gun now off limits? It's all insensitive. Is the look, look is, what they did to the emoji? I know, because people are fucking stupid. They think that putting is a born a- identity now off limits. Is the new Rampage movie? If there's a gun in the Avengers, am I? Can I protest that? Where it? He was making a fucking joke. I don't. I'm not even a gun guy. I don't even give a shit. I'm actually at the point. I used to be like the freedom guy, and now you know what? If people can't fucking, if these fucking idiots can't handle these guns, if if the guns keep getting in the wrong people's hands, then fine. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. I I give zero fucks. Fine. Fucking no more AR-15s or whatever the fuck they are. I don't even care. I don't give a shit one way or the other. But who fucking cares? Was Jay Field a kicker? He was a place kicker. What, we now care with a fucking place kicker? I bet you Sebastian Janikowski is fucking posting pictures with fucking vodka. Well, do you know alcoholism is a big problem in Poland? Actually, like, alcohol without a doubt kills more people in this country than guns. I mean... Could be wrong on that, but who knows? <laughs> but I'm saying everything like is an issue. So, uh, global warming, right? That's fucking libs are just as well, oh the global fucking. So now I you can't, can't be called the Miami Heat. I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't do the the feet at the beach shot that every fucking girl posts on Instagram. Oh, here's my feet on the sand. Oh, why are you out at the beach in fucking April? Little, little early to be out at the beach, isn't it? Well, that's because of global warming. I'm offended. I'm offended that you're enjoying a beach day in April when it's way too early to be enjoying a beach day. You're only doing that because of global warming. I'm fucking offended. Like, who cares? The per the person that cares. I like they should be get off Twitter, get off the internet, just block or everybody s- or swallow a gun yeah. loaded and pull the trigger. It's just so ridiculous. Yes. I'll, I'll do it for my boy here. You know, The I kids love- at Parkland, are they upset by this? Cause I, I don't I, really I, give I mean, a shit if they are. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure they're not because they're on fucking their 75th CNN show in the last 30 days. Going like, oh, look at us. Do those, kids, do those kids go to school, by the way? No, they don't. No, they don't. They're, I, I, I'm certain they're not following place kickers on the Internet. But I'm concerned about those kids' education. Are they going to school anymore? No, they're not. Of course they're not. Who needs it? Why do you need an education when you're fucking uh, on CNN every day? Well, the I'm gonna, getting... well, the truancy, I'm not a big fan of. You got to go to school. Please. The truancy. <laughs> <laughs> Who can go to school when place kickers are making gun jokes? It's not a safe place. 
really glad I brought I'm this gonna up. Fucking, I'm going to bring a gun to the next episode. From now on, I'm holding a gun for every episode of the Dirty Sports Podcast. Aaron Hernandez, yeah. bro? Yeah, I'm just going to fucking put it right here. I'm just going to hold it the whole time. You know, we should frame that TMZ picture that they have of Aaron Hernandez holding up the gun selfie. That should be another... That would be a great addition to the Smut Studio. I mean, we have... Like, this whole this whole place is full of... Fun. This, that's, that's from when a guy had a gun. That's somebody that was shot with a gun. Never that's forget. a fucking that's a cocaine crack addict. That fucking guy murdered somebody with knives. This is the fucking Reds, the the big red machine they were called. That's basically a fucking communism joke. The fucking Rams. Do you know how many Rams kill people all over fucking mountainous countries in the Middle East? The fucking Afghans. People are getting, constantly getting run over by Rams. You get you get fucking horned by a ram, dead. Dead. George Foster, Foster's freeze, brain freeze. I'm offended. <laughs> Bobbleheads. You know there are people that are born with abnormally large skulls. That's oh, it's cute. Look, you hit their head. They bobble. There are children with fucking brain deficiencies because their heads won't stop fucking growing. And I actually tried to shove one of those up my ass when I was high the other night. So there's that too. There's only one thing on this wall that doesn't cause trauma. Yeah, that's Bill Walton. It's right fucking behind you. Goat. <laughs> right behind you. Bless you, good sir. I'm just glad that I mentioned the Jay Feely thing right before we did calls. I mean, I just can't I can't handle the people that are fucking offended by everything. I agree. I didn't get weird Twitter shit though. Weird times we live in, Prano. Weird times. Can't say anything. Can't do anything. And also what <laughs> but before we before we move on. <laughs> When you are upset by this, what is the end game here? What's the end game for the people that are upset? But w- but should gun yeah, control? Yeah, but but for Jay Feely, like for this particular situation, what's the end game? They here? want him fired. They want him fired. They want this man to lose his livelihood. It's it's a really they sad. They want him fired. Situation. Because of the fucking most victimless joke that there could possibly be, considering the person that's being threatened is having the fucking time of his life. You know why he's having the time of his life? Because he's going to go get fucking sex. Because it's his senior prom, and he's going to bang a former NFL dude's daughter. Well, let me And just... guess what? He's, the, he's probably going to do it in a limo that the fucking NFL paid for. In a hotel that the NFL paid for. She's got fucking spanks that the NFL paid for. Who? This guy's having the time of his life. He's like, shove the gun up my ass. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to fuck your daughter. They're into in Jay Feely's pool house. Yeah. God. Someone, the first comment is, I mean, we get the reference, but this was terribly out of touch with gun safety. Well, first of all, it's not a reference. <laughs> and out of the touch refer- with not making that picture a night about you. They got 7.7 thousand likes that Shedder Dick who responded. And hold on, hold on. Let me guess. Let me guess. What's up? There's somebody knocking on your door. Okay. At on, my your, door? on your door or on the wall? Oh, either one, door or wall. Somebody's knocking. Okay. Maybe we're screaming too loud. <laughs> Jay Feely situation. It's all Jay Feely. Maybe it's your Hungarian neighbor. Um, Maybe they want to chime in about the gun issue. <laughs> They're upset. Yeah. I'm upset, too. <laughs> I, I can't look at these comments. You want to play calls? Oh, I would love to play that's calls. The first, that's the first uh, like response. Uh, first of all, did you have a new neighbor? I mean, I've screamed way worse than that. No, they're we're chill. not even I, yelling. I like them next door. They're Maybe chill. they're just hammering something into the wall. Yeah. Maybe they're putting up their own smut studio. Yeah, they're definitely nailing some shit. Yeah. For sure. Trevor again. Trevor. Trevor has bad hearing. Oh, Tre- I do have bad hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I was born deaf in my left ear. Holla. Wh- no, you? really? Mm-hmm. You're deaf in your left ear? Not anymore. They fixed it. You have like mm-hmm. a microchip in there? What's going on? I was, my uh, canals are clogged when I was born. Had seven ear surgeries. What? How old you? Stop saying holla, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> how old I'm were just you? trying to keep the show moving. Just <laughs> holla, that's the end of it. Holla. How old were you when you had your surgeries? Like you were a baby? Well, my last one I had was seven. So, yeah. So, boy, I had seven within the amount of that time. I had a couple, like when I was really young. A couple, a couple years later. A couple years later. You guys gotta talk about this on the uh, yeah. the interns. Now I know which ear not to hit him. Let me know. Talk to me, in my right ear. Okay. Right ear is a good ear. 
I've been working. I've been trying to get. I already have multiple nicknames for fucking EJ. We got Benny the Jet. We got Weird Twitter. I've been working the Trevor nickname for a while now. I might just be right here. <laughs> like left like eye. Like a mobster. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, oh, right like Lisa left right eye right Lopez. <laughs> right here. Trevor right eye nickel. Right here nickel. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> let's uh, let's get some calls. What do we got, Trevor? We got a lot of shade at you. We got, oh, if we're going full calls, I know we got the top three. The top three is one shaded Trevor, two shaded Prano, three shaded Trevor. So <laughs> let's let's go with the let's go with the first one. Let's get it. Let's oh, let, let's it. break up the she- Trevor shade. <laughs> yeah, a little we'll shaded man. See. Let's let's do this one. It's loading. Hey boys, it's Dylan, the uh, Indiana Dirt Ball. Um, I wanted to give a quick shout because I feel like Andy Ruther gets a little bit uh, a bad rap for giving Trevor a hard time. But after listening to an episode in which you talked about Isaac Haas, I think I finally pinned it down. I think Ruther gets a bad rap because he he is always yelling at at Trevor and giving him a hard time. But I realized that Trevor is just a lazy fuck, and it, you really see it here. When he says, hey, how, what's Isaac Haas? How tall is he? And Trevor, instead of looking it up with the computer that's right in front of him and typing 10 keys into Google, he just assumes that he's somewhere around 6'8". He definitely knows he's under 6'10", and he's from Germany. Other than he's fucking from Birmingham, Alabama, and the Mongoloid is 7'2". Trevor is literally lazy, and I can see why Andy Russo got so fed up with him, because he can't type 10 keys into Google. Anyway... Comments are for Buckeyes. Is it my floor? Defend yourself, Trevor. Okay. First of all, typing 10 keys into Google to find out how tall Isaac Haas is. Literally, we're about 14 keys. Isaac Haas' height is 14 keys. Second of all, (laughs) nobody gives a fuck about Isaac Haas. Haas, but hey. Haas, Haas. Hold, hold what if nobody gives a hold fuck on, about on. Isaac this Haas? Is, this is what I have a problem with right now. Oh, let's go. I'll be honest. I'll be <laughs> let's honest. go, Trevor. You're so let's defensive. Go. You're w- that's what I was about to I'm say. I'm not defensive. Just... Hold on, hold on. Just be quiet. Just calm Look down. Look at weird Twitter sliding left. <laughs> I'll, I'm relaxed. You're way too defensive. The thing that I always preach here is just own when you fuck up. I fuck up all the time. You fucked up. You should have looked it up. Can't you just say, look, dude, I should have looked it up. I was being lazy. We're Okay. There's a difference between when we have literally, like, set bullet points that we're going to go to to look up stuff, which is there's times I send you guys stuff all the time that never even gets brought up on the podcast, which is fine. That's how it goes. I Second of all, we're in the middle of a conversation about Oz, Isaac Haas, Haas, whatever the fuck it is, giving a girl chlamydia. It's herpes. Herpes, whatever it is, nobody gives a fuck about Isaac Haas. If we were, but, but, unless but it was, no, 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 let me finish. Unless it was Isaac Haas. Can, can, can I finish? Can I finish? Unless it was Isaac Haas draft prospect, draft where he's going to go and draft, nobody, what, what, we weren't even talking about we Isaac Haas heights. We did. Someone asked. I asked. But let me. Let me Why is he so defensive? Well, I'm not because that's that's middle of the conversation yeah. stuff. Like we're all having the three of us having a conversation. But you're still here. not accepting think, that you just didn't look it up. Dude. And I don't because there was that wasn't like a hey what exactly that was just like I don't what, know why that you're, was but that's your job. I don't know why you're so no because I right now. Cool, because I love the dirt balls like oh this dude's lazy he doesn't do shit he doesn't do blah 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 blah. When Meanwhile, there's literally, from Van Eyes there's literally here, ten different things up. throughout the show that I look up. And the one time something doesn't get looked up, doesn't get brought up, and it's called well, we, out. We just found I'm just on my Andy. I'm on my Andy Ruther fucking. You know. But that's not me. But I'm I, upset. No, but I accept when I'm wrong. There, there's a difference. And everybody. Oh no, I was that. wrong. I was. I said he was six eight. Yeah, but yeah, earlier in the show, two. you just said it's wild where you like you acted like you saw it. And it was so, hilarious. But the, and it was great. And I've referenced it eleven times since he did it. My point is just. I, I think. First of all, I don't think you're lazy. I think you're a fucking stoner. And I, I don't think you would say that you're not a stoner. And also, he's a fucking – he's a barrel of laughs. I love Trevor. He's fucking always stoned. He's always got a beer. He pisses too much. The wild thing was like his new fucking thing. He turns out he's deaf. Like it's 
my thing is just like there's be, a lot to me. Yeah, my thing is always just like be like is he are mentally challenged? No, you're our mentally challenged host. But embrace your role, right? Like th- Trevor's a fucking stoner. Like just own it. Like you well, know what I mean? That was, this, I, def- I know I've this, definitely embraced because this is what I love too. Is that like? But he's not embracing. He's not, he's getting mad. You can't just be like yeah, I fucked up. No, I'm not getting mad because I will tell everybody this off air. Ruth and I very great relationship. Yeah, on air. Ruth and I absolutely we hate all, each other. We all play a role. Ruth are fucking well, shits on you Ruther, all the time. And that's, it, it's not, roles. That's my role. Sh- but I'm not shitting on you. But that's right my now. thing is I'm not like these dirtballs that want to come in like, oh, Trevor's like, like no, fuck you. I ain't lazy. I've been I've been here doing this shit. Sorry I didn't look up the exact height of Isaac, Isaac Highs, Haas, <laughs> whoever the fuck he is. I'm rubbing you off called, on him. You called in. You're from Indiana. You probably go to Purdue or you've never been out of Indiana and Purdue is the only fucking team you care about. Sorry, nobody gives a fuck about Isaac Haas, and he is a undrafted, maybe second round prospect. Sorry, I didn't feel like looking up his fucking height. Height, but height. Uh, anyway, I'm on my Rutherism. You should, shit. you should have looked it up. Though. Fuck that. You should have looked it up, Trevor. That's your job. Nobody gives a fuck about Isaac Haas. <laughs> But it do- it doesn't matter that his job like that's the beauty of Trevor is like he didn't look it up is that, that that's already look at all the content we got from him not looking it up <laughs> do you know what I'm saying like that's the best part we all have a role here if it was right? somebody worth looking up I would have looked it up I, Isaac Haas ain't I, worth looking up I don't fuck you Indiana Dirtball I don't get that response though you're so oh he's gonna have so many haters I can't wait I don't yeah. if you're from Indiana and you got no. some hate for me Make sure you sorry tr- your corn stalks fucking suck. <laughs> have you ever been to Indiana? It's a lovely state. I have been to Indiana. Where did you go to Indiana? Literally could not tell you. See, <laughs> you don't know. You haven't been there. Gone. I've driven through it. When did you drive through Indiana? He's going to Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. You don't even listen. You don't even pay attention to your boy. I completely Except, pay attention. No, you didn't. Because you, you didn't know that of I have course, family in Wisconsin. I know you have family in Wisconsin because that's one of your 18 different teams that you like. Exactly. Trevor. Well, it's about also 19, great content. See? I mean, we all have a role. Trevor's role, part of Trevor's role, is he's a fucking stoner. That's the beauty of it. He, well, I'm here. He is the reason Ruther, we had 20 minutes of fucking talking about Ruther handing over weed at a baseball game and fucking getting you high. That was my the, own weed. Yeah, but he has been pushing the vape <laughs> on you for the last, like, fucking, now suddenly you're fucking like, Johnny, like, let's get high all the time. I'm not Johnny, let's get high all the it's time. It's great. I'm just saying, like, f- like people... It's almost like being like the people who call in and they're like, um, you know, Prano's a little angry. I think we got to talk about it. Like, you know, suicide's a real fucking yeah, issue. Yeah, but, but Prano, like, I already know what you, you – here's the thing. If somebody calls in about me and it's like, Ruther's angry, you're going to be like, oh. It doesn't get played. But you are angry. But I'm not angry. You're very You're always angry. angry. I'm not angry. You have anger issues. I don't at all. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> see, the thing is I, I seriously don't tell people to kill themselves <laughs> all the time, and I get my anger out, and I'm very expressive of my anger. You get in the car, and you're like, you fucking cunt. I'm going to fucking run this cunt over. Hold on. That's, you have fucking road rage. That's road rage. That's not anger. You dude. snap a lot. Mm-hmm. I really don't, though. Mm. You kind of do. I, I do it for effect at times. I, you you have anger issues. I, I legitimately you don't. You get very worked up very easily. I, I disagree with that. Na- you Na- literally, we, I can pull clips from the show where you're like, I, I, I have anger problems. But I just say that to fucking be entertaining. I legitimately don't think I have anger problems, dude. I think you've been a lot better recently. I think maybe all the Rogan, the, the, the ice bath and the float, lab. the float lab and the whatever you're doing, you know. Jordan J- Peterson's J- jerking, ru- out, jerking off four times. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve rules for life, which yeah. I read for three hours. I know. I actually do think you've been less angry, but you you have anger issues. You're an angry guy. Well, you remember when you broke the headphones? <laughs> it's not anger issues. I, we lost an entire interview. And you destroyed a pair of headphones. Yeah, that's not anger issues. That's me fucking being passionate about being very upset that I no, lost. Now you sound like the guy who's like, I, I just love you so much, I have to throw you down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not me hitting a girl. It's me breaking an inanimate object. Is that why we don't have a fourth pair of headphones? Yeah. Around <laughs> we do. You guys just didn't get them out, <laughs> interns. <laughs> anyway, let's do the next one. Shade towards Prano. Great. I think. Yeah. Like Suicide's a real issue. I just don't know if I can handle all this kill yourself stuff. Hold on. Let me find it. It's, I think it's probably oh, a week got ago. It, got it. Got it. What's up, fellas? It's Matt Boonstra. Um, I need some help settling a little beef with my boy I got right now. He's trying to tell me that Dame is better than Kyrie. 
I know there's stats that back up that it's close, but my opinion, it's just, I don't know, Kyrie's kind of on a different level. So I need some help with that. Also, Joe, suck my dick. Tiger's still going to win this year. What was um, that? I stand on that, even though I've made myself look like a jackass Tiger. on Twitter the past few months. But fuck you for all that shit you've been talking. Uh, condoms are for Draymond Green. Motherfucker can eat a machine gun. Well, I'll tell you one thing. So Tiger's going to win. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Both Kyrie, let's start here. Both Kyrie and Dame Lillard are in the top 159 in the NBA. So they're all better at basketball than Tiger Woods is at golf. Let's start there. The 175th ranked golfer in the world who finished 15 fucking strokes back in the last tournament. Remember when he was winning the Masters? That was hilarious. T- Tiger's back. Tiger's back is the fucking excuse he's going to use when he drops off the tour in three months. Um, It's pretty goddamn close between Dame Lillard and Kyrie Irving. Well, they both played about the same amount of time. But they both played this about the same. I can't even talk. I was ready to make a Dame joke about how shitty they played and how shitty he played. He played about as good as Kyrie, and Kyrie didn't play. That's what I was trying to say. Right. Uh, look, we don't know what Kyrie is capable of on a team like the Blazers. We know that Kyrie, before LeBron came to Cleveland, was unable to stop Cleveland from being the worst team in basketball. Granted, he was young. Uh, but LeBron showed up. And he went to the NBA Finals. He won a Finals. A big game. Like, does, does anybody think that Dame Lillard wouldn't be able to do that if he was playing alongside LeBron James? Uh, I mean, if I had to pick between those two guys, I would pick Kyrie. But it's pretty close. I don't even think. Like, I mean, what's the argument here? How how could you? Uh, this is like the Jay Feely thing. Like, how could you argue that one is significantly better than the other? I don't think you could. I don't think you could either. I mean, to me, the ultimate question is if Kyrie Irving is playing on the Portland Trailblazers this year, are they a number three seed? I don't know. Does he stay healthy? It's a good question. If Dame Lillard was playing on the Boston Celtics with Brad Stevens, would they be better off or worse off? That's what you got to ask. Uh, right now, you take Dame Lillard, right? The best ability is availability. It's fucking playing. Yeah. Maybe Kyrie's the kind of guy who can play when LeBron's carrying the team. This is not the first playoffs Kyrie Irving has missed in his career. I mean, that's three years ago that he missed the entire playoffs. You got to play. You got to play. Yes, sir. All right, Trevor. I think there's some more calls about you, and there's I think there's one about both you guys. Let's just knock all these <laughs> intern calls out. We're gonna have to get. I love how no uh, shade Ruther calls make their way through. That's every call since the beginning <laughs> of the show, bro. <laughs> I don't. Have I ever held back? All right, don't be so angry. <laughs> I mean, come relax. on, <laughs> relax, Andy. Don't get all I am testy up. there. A te- I am Why are you so defensive, bro? I'm not EJ, defensive. fill the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what a float lab is, by the way. <laughs> You need Epsom salt, and I need some space. All right. I think you would. Be- I think we'd all benefit from doing a float lab together. Well, all right. <laughs> anyway, some Mormon shit now. Hi, uh, hey, this is uh, Paul. Big fan of the show. Just wanted to comment on the return of Trevor. Although I do really enjoy Trevor's presence on the show, I thought we missed a real teachable moment for Trevor when he lost that episode. This should have been a good opportunity for Trevor to, you know, fall from the show. He get he gets fired, and then he has to collect himself, learn from his mistakes, and he just bought his way back into the show, and now he's back again. It's a real opportunity for him to learn and grow and become a better Trevor for the entire world. 
Um, yeah, but otherwise, the show's great. I like the new intern. Still enjoy Trevor. I hope Trevor has learned his lesson, even though he kind of finagled his way back into the show. And all the best to you all. Bye. There was literally nothing there. What do you mean? Like, what's my advice? What what, what are you are you complaining about how Ruther titled it? Was it what what was the caption? Well, the caption is Trevor advice. <laughs> he did. He he was talking about learning from past mistakes. He did learn from past mistakes. Wasn't that the whole setup? Was that that's why I was gone for a week and a half? Was yeah. to learn from my mistakes? Why are you so defensive? I'm tonight? not. That was that was either a shitty title by Andy Ruther's part, or that just wasn't a good call. Because it's literally titled Trevor advice. What was the advice? Given? He literally said, "Let me give some advice." Wow. And then his advice was the exact same thing that we why did. Why are you so mad right now? I why what are you trying I think to he say? Was, I think he was set up. I think There's no I'm not mad. I'm just saying what was the point of that call? Like you had this on the rundown, we have to play this Fucking call. Fucking Benny the Jets going to be out the door by the time like he keeps just sliding far <laughs> farther <laughs> away from Trevor. No, there's no I'm just like what was the point of that call? He said to literally do the exact same thing that we did. Yeah. The point of that call so, was that you I'm playing calls about you. You the whole intern thing happened. So I'm playing calls about that. There wasn't course. a better call you could have picked. <laughs> well, you can fucking listen to the calls if you want. I think I you should. To, I yeah. That just wh- that just wasn't what like, what was that? He literally called said I have some advice for Trevor and literally gave his advice was literally exactly what we did. I just and, don't know. I just don't know what the Trevor is. You're not, advice you, was. But you're not listening. His point was you. No, I'm listening. I know exactly you, what it dude, is. Shut up for a second. Just you need to calm down. What, <laughs> he's, <laughs> what, what he's saying is cool out. What he's saying is you didn't have to pay your way to get back in. That's what he's saying. Which well, supposedly I did. Yeah, which was the joke the whole time. The whole joke was well so, for the whole time was that it was the April Fool's joke. And then we got here, and supposedly I paid my way back in. You did pay your way back in. Yeah, I paid my way back in. So his advice to pay back in is, quote-unquote, exactly what I did. No, his advice was that you shouldn't have done that. You, you're you not listening to the call. It's a, it's a terrible call. This is, this is stupid. But the point you is— You always take Trevor's side, though. That's I'm not taking no, Trevor's side. I'm actually, I'm actually about to say exactly— it, I think uh, whoever made that call, we did everything that he's saying. Trevor has— after losing an entire episode, Trevor now has more responsibility than he did beforehand. And he now has to do all he has learned from it. He now knows we we've made a we've made a list of things that Trevor has to do during Literally the show. Literally blinking guy meme because it's exactly what I said. We we have a list of things that Trevor has to do during the show. We have a checklist before the show. We have a check it was a learning moment for everybody. We have a checklist for what he has to do before the show. We have a checklist for what he has to do during the show. He has we now have a second intern. We basically have we have a fucking guy backing up Trevor. Should Trevor fail, there's another guy waiting in the wings. Now they have their own show. They set up this whole thing on their own. Watch the interns exclusively on YouTube. Like, I feel like it was a teachable moment. You just got to get better every day. You just got to get better every day. I do feel like Trevor's better. Literally, we did exactly what that guy said to do. We'd already done You're it. You're not even letting me answer Prano's question. Do you feel like Trevor's better than he was before? He's better. So there you go. I learned. He's got Just get better because every he's got, day. He's got a good fucking teacher. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. He's got fucking me. Professor Ruther. I mean, I'm the one fucking setting this shit up, bro. It's, he, he's learning from the best. I think we got another intern call, which I think you'll love. How many intern calls do we have? Well, the, the next call is titled intern call. I'm yeah, pretty sure that's. I, I have no clue what it is. Here we go. Let's get it loaded up. Hey guys, now that there's officially two interns, I'm wondering when the next intern off will be. And I have an idea that the interns should once a month, for an hour, just complain about Joe and Andy. Well, really just Andy. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's your, sh- there's your shade towards me. <laughs> Ruther never plays shade towards himself. Yeah, First call we've had in about a year and a half. I don't know if that was shade. Yeah, it wasn't even really shade. It, it might have been more of a compliment to me. There was nothing to shade me on. That's the way I took it. <laughs> 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 I actually said my piece of advice. Uh, I, I talked to these guys the other night at the ball game. 
when I created yet another DSPN Where was product. I during all this? You were like, you you're had locked your yourself dog. in the you're bathroom or something dog. like that. Yeah, you were getting your third hot dog of the day. It wasn't your first food break. It was your second food break. Okay. Um, I told them that they should do the interns, which they recorded tonight. And I said, that will help them learn how to set up everything entirely because they'll be setting up for themselves. And they'll basically be doing a run through before our show every night. So they'll have already done it. Well, they know it's set up. If theirs is fucked up, then ours will be fucked up. So they want to get their ours right. They'll get theirs right first. And then I actually said to them, because the idea for the interns sort of came from uh, Eddie Yiff's podcast. He used to have the Moncast, which was on before his show. And I liked that it was smart. They got there early, and they set up, and they the all the equipment was going for them, and then they did Eddie's show. And my one piece of advice to these guys was don't shit on us. Because that is what fucked up their show. Because then Eddie got all butt hurt, and I'm just like, you know, be let's all be a supportive family. Let's be a network. Let's prop each other up and not tear each other down. Because we're not going to shit on the interns. Th- this is amazing. <laughs> we're not going to shit, on, not gonna shit on the interns. This okay. is amazing coming from Prano. Shit on the interns. This is amazing. Let's prop <laughs> each <laughs> other <laughs> up. This whole show is you shitting on me. This is amazing that you would say that. But that's the <laughs> dynamic of this show. <laughs> <laughs> that's the dynamic of this actual production, like this production. But I don't go on other productions and then fucking shit. I'm not like, damn, report sucks. Or don't listen to the interns. They're garbage. Because that's what you do. It's synergy. Corporate synergy. Branding. We're a team. You, We're an organization. You completely shit on me in the first episode of Dirty Slides. I listened. What are you talking about? I absolutely did not. Oh, bullshit. You did. I said that Andy was my favorite, that Laz was my favorite Andy co host. <laughs> yes. You started the <laughs> show. Just, I just ranked my favorite Andy. You started the show. That that was not, way. I was not dissing you. You're but second. That's a silver. A lot of fucking was, Olympians were multiple, happy to win the silver. There was silver. multiple Ruth the You're not first, you're last. <laughs> Let me tell you. Like, I feel like Andy. All right. Well, we have one last call for Prano. It's a conspiracy theory about Prano. Ooh. Can't wait to hear this. I pray I am the king of conspiracy theories. Uh hey, what's up guys? Uh this is your boy, Brian Heinrich, calling from Illinois, and uh I'm here to present a dirty sports conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory is called God Hates Prano. I'll try to keep it short. So as we all know, uh, Prano's religious views are basically none. He does not believe in God, which, you know, is fine. No problem with that. At least I don't. Um, and my theory is that I think one day God was looking down at Prano, seeing how he talks about him on the podcast, and just said, you know what? I've had enough. I'm going to do something that will simultaneously prove to Prano divine intervention and crush his soul at the same time. So I will make the eagle the Super Bowl champions. So, you know, as the season goes on, he made things a little more ridiculous, like uh, now they're going to win without uh, with Nick Foles, and uh, now they're going to beat Tom Brady. And so, you know, Super Bowl happens, Eagles wins. God says, all right, how about now, Prano? But no, Prano goes on the Dirty Sports Podcast, says that the Super Bowl win actually disproves God. So, you know, obviously, my as the theory goes, God wasn't uh, happy with that, so he said, you know what, fuck the Knicks, and uh, he took away your unicorn, Christoph Porzingis, out for the year, ACL, um, and uh, took that promising Knicks team that might have been a playoff team into and turned it back into the Nick dumpster fire that might end up uh, hiring either Mark Jackson or Doc Rivers, so... Uh, I mean, I don't know, Joe. The ev- evidence is pretty compelling. You might need to repent. They have to see if something uh, see something happened to the Mets. They're looking pretty good so far. And uh, I don't think you want Doc Rivers or Mark Jackson as uh, your Knicks head coach. So, you know, that might happen, too. You never know what the man of... That was it. The God intervened on that phone call. Yeah, he, uh, he <laughs> I was just like, God's, like, God's like, wrap it up, B. Technically, I'm not an atheist. You're an agnostic? Yeah, because there's zero proof that there is God, and there's zero proof that there is not God. So I'm just a man of science, really. Absolutely zero proof that God exists. And, I mean, I guess technically zero proof that he doesn't exist, too. So there's that. Um, Also, 
when you bring God into it, the reason that the Eagles prove that God didn't exist is because you would think on a religious spectrum, a guy that doesn't believe is actually better than a person that does believe but blatantly disregards God, right? So, like, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not covet. Like, a, if uh, me being agnostic and being like, I don't know, maybe there is a God or isn't a God, but for sure anybody that's into organized religion should fucking kill themselves, uh, that would still be, you would think, be a less uh, bad on a scale as Eagles fans who injure uh, and threaten other human souls. You would think that that would be, you know, below them on a reli- as far as, like, a religious ranking system. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't that be? I don't know. I don't know how God – honestly, I don't know how – I'm so removed from the church. Uh, is it better to, like, have faith and throw beers at people or not have faith? And the religious thing. Well, I'm a big religious guy, as you know. Uh, uh, I don't know. God in sports, I'm not a big fan of. I don't, I don't like that. I don't, I don't think any of us do. I, I just don't. I, I don't not, think God gives a shit who wins the Super Bowl, if God exists. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. <clears throat> Praying for your team to win is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Like, God doesn't give a fuck about your team compared to the other team. I mean, just praying is the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> yeah, right? Can we just like fucking ends, do that early? What is, uh, I'm not against praying. What are you praying for? What What is, what is your prayer? What does your prayer sound like? You're sending out the good energy into the world, dude. I'm a prayer like, guy. What's What is? It? I, s- I just send out good vibes. What is it? What does this prayer sound like? Like, t- like just like generally, like you you pray for, you pray for world peace. No, or you pray for a healthier family. Maybe maybe you know somebody's got cancer. Literally, just watch over or, my friends and family. You right, know. literally, all comes out there. Just make sure the them. ones I care about are good. And That's all I care about. And what's the, how's the success rate been on that? So far, so good. No, you don't know anybody that's like a good person. I that had a has grandpa cancer. that died of cancer, but yeah, that be, yeah, but, but like but, he was but, a smoker. So but, what are you gonna? Right. God, you know? this is getting so deep. Right. But but if you pray, it's dirtball call. Somebody's listening yeah. this far. If if you pray, and that makes you feel better, and that and that makes you feel more calm and relaxed. Sounds pretty selfish. No, that's a good thing. That's no, because I don't pray for myself. I pray for other people. Right. That's what but, I'm saying. But you, it's a, you said you feel better. I feel better about praying for other people. Yeah. Like, no, not like, selfish. No, somewhat like, I did as much as I could do. I said a prayer for you, bro. This is as much as I can G- do. Give Weird Twitter the mic, because he's, he's Latino. Latinos love fucking Jesus. <laughs> is your middle name Jesus? No, my middle name is not Jesus. You're not Eduardo Jesus <laughs> I am not Gomez. Eduardo Jesus Gomez. No. What? <laughs> Wait, oh, you told us you're, you're Eric. Yeah. You're Eric Jr. Yeah. Are you religious? Uh, yeah, I, would, I mean, not necessarily like... Do you go to church? Or, uh, not very often. Were you raised Catholic? No, I was not. You were raised Christian, though? Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I I definitely am like with Trevor on that. You like, pray? Yeah, I would say so. And, like, the, it's the same thing, like the friends Everybody and in this fucking room prays? You it's guys like, are praying? I'm not it's, going to bed. Yeah, it's you not kneel, like... I'm, yeah, you kneel I'm not next kneeling. to bed? <laughs> I have a. You kneel next to bed? No, but I, I, I like to, I like to. You oh, so you're fucking lazy praying. You're just like in bed wishing <laughs> no, for shit. No, it's one of those like every once in a while, like when it dawns I'm on not, me, I'll I, be like, oh, I should say a no, prayer for somebody, I, and I'll way, say a prayer. And I like, dude. But hold on, hold on. I got, I got to get to the bottom of this because religion fascinates me. So when you pray, does it start with a prayer? Do you fucking hail Mary or Our Father, and then you ask for uh, some healthy a lot of, shit? A lot of times, but for me, as a guy who went to Catholic schools. I have so many different prayers that I still know. Yeah. Like like the Yeah, so do I. The Saint Francis Xavier is a, is a good prayer. I think it makes you a better person. If 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 you say if you think about the words, you know, I go make the sign of blessing. Look quick Hail Mary, look quick our Father, say my prayers, bless over the friends and families. End it with the Hail Mary and our Father. Keep moving. I am I'm done in, I'm done in 3 founded. minutes. Yeah, but I'm fascinated. Listen to St. Francis Xavier fr- prayer. It starts out, Lord, teach me to be generous. That's a good thing. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, It's it, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward except that of knowing you're doing your will. Dude, you can take the religion part out of that. That prayer is basically saying be a better person, give to the poor, serve the poor. Like, like 
if you think about those things, it might make you a better person. That's all I'm saying. I think you can take the actual the institution of like let's say a Catholic church out of it and say Well, you certainly should. And say, you know, if you're saying be like the guy who taught me this fucking raped a dude. But if you're saying and that the, dude ended up killing himself. The opening prayer is teach me to be generous. And the dude who raped and made money off it somehow. Never mind. Forget but it. But anyway, my point is I totally understand. But we all, we, we, everybody has stuff that's like, you know, you, you go to and, and when, you know, you need – when you're seeking guidance from yourself, essentially, yeah. someone's words, a poet, a novelist, fucking Mark Jackson in a fucking huddle. You know, look at the man next to you and he will look at his friend. And, I, you know, it's like – but, like – doesn't it like the the leading with a prayer and then just like asking doesn't, when you get let down, doesn't that th- don't you just go, oh, God's a real son of a bitch then? Well, here, here's my thing. I'm not dumb. I know Dar- Darwinism. No, it's real. You know, I almost pray almost has a sense like just in case there is a heaven. Yeah. And I get to heaven. So I, I, I want to make sure. Sh- safety I, dance. Yeah. Like, I want to make sure I'm on the good side. Like, I went to Catholic school. You but know, I, I, I believe it all. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, yeah, there might be a God just in case. I'm going to say these prayers real quick point, just to make my, sure we're on the my, same page. My issue is it's like it tends to be this. If you just look in the United States of America where we live, the people who are most devout to a religion to church end up being the ones that are like, yeah, I pray to God, but that black bastard Colin Kaepernick should fucking burn in hell for not standing for the flag. Mm, and I don't know if I'm gonna agree with that. Okay, the, the, I think that's tough to just to, to just say lay, say all. I'm not saying all, but I'm I saying it depends on what I'm state. Saying, look at where religion is the most popular, and then look at where there's. More fucking segregation, and there's more people that are like fucking gay people shouldn't have this right. You're basically fucking, saying the South. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. being being from the but, South, like I, definitely, yeah. But also religious people, like if you go to Boston, Boston's a very Catholic town, but Boston's like still a very liberal place. You're talking but about Boston's like very racist. So you're still. basically saying that, which I'm not going to disagree with. You're basically saying there's a big sheet of hypocrisy everywhere of course but mostly with so my point is is like a lot of people who are like call them and i i don't want to use this term because it's fucking it offends me at this point but l- what used to be a liberal person not a fucking democrat now but a person that used to be liberal would be somebody that's like for peace you know like the hippies very peaceful people sure and you know uh exemplifying all the things that would be godlike but not devout to religion meanwhile the people who are going to church are the ones like yeah but fucking the blacks better not come to my church because fuck them or the gays better not fucking come here but then like the whole shrimp thing there it's cool on that somehow i don't know but like do you understand my point like i i think tying yourself to that whole thing that's why i'm just like yeah, I'm thinking about like, oh, I hope that person's good. I hope that person's good. I hope that person fucking feels better. I hope that person doesn't die. But like, why am I tying that to the fucking Hail Mary? The fuck is Mary? Fuck but but you should Mary? know that you you were you were raised Catholic. You should know why. Yeah, it's a crutch. But how does that bother you if that helps other people? That's all I'm saying. Because the that shouldn't because the beliefs that are tied to that are are. Hypocritical. Well, not necessarily. What do you mean, not necessarily? I'm we s- call it a cult, like it is. No, no, no. I'm saying What's that. Well, all religions are cults in a way. I, I, I'm just God. Why are we doing this? Is this, this is, is great? <laughs> this is what the dirtball <laughs> people who tune out for dirtball calls. They're missing all this. <laughs> yeah, shit. No, what I'm saying is, Joe, if there, there, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you using the Lord's name in vain now. You fucking was that some mine? Catholic you are. Uh there are. I don't even remember what I was going to say. Th- but can we just end this? I'm fucking... I, I'm spent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm just... Linky guy meme over here. Uh, I'm just spent. I just realized we went over the time frame, which is annoying. Now it's going to fucking be two videos. I'm just like... Uh, well, we can cut some of that shit out. You're, you're good. No, we can't, though. Because it fucking Amiibo stops at two hours. Okay. That's why I was checking. Like, oh, where are we? Fuck! It's all right. No, at least you're not angry. I'm not We're angry. at 210, by the way. See, that's what I'm saying. 
where are you now, God? <laughs> 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 you should have prayed to keep it under two hours. <laughs> Fucking do a rosary during the show. You but, but you know what? It. But you know what I don't like is when people just like I don't like what you're doing right now, though. I don't like when when somebody when somebody prays and you like look down on them like 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 dude just let them pray like that doesn't affect you. No, I it, I I didn't say it affected me. I'm blown away by when people have like have a tie to the thing that's tied to the thing that's negative. Like then just pray, then just like pray. But like when when you're when you're fucking repeating Christian prayers, now you're doing something that's like brought more evil than it has fucking good so religions are responsible for every fucking war on the planet we'd still have that's a whole other discussion i i'm fully i i fully feel if you took all religions out human beings were meant to war we were meant to fight we're tribalistic people i fully feel if it wasn't religions we'd find a way to fight over fucking you name it pieces of wood or something like like that's just in the human nature. We're animalistic like that. Like, like I'm to the point now. I, I wait. I'm not gonna... So hold on. What animals are at war? What what animalistic? What where were? Watch we're... any fucking show on animals. There, it's it's literally it's it's savages. It is a war basically every day in the animal kingdom. For what? For survival. So so for food. Is any are there are there are there wars over land? In animals, are there wars yes, over? Yes. No, they're yes. fucking fighting over food. They're That's fighting to true. eat each That's other. That's not true. They fight over territory all the time, dude. I watch animal shows all the time. Animals are, we we are and no, you guys can laugh all you fucking want, yeah. but I'm, be, I'm. I watch animal shows all the time. But I'm being serious. Animals are, we are we are animals, dude. Humans are animals. We are. If you don't think, if you think all, you know what the difference will, between us and animals are, that we have fucking brains that can create all the fucking things that we're doing people are listening to us via the internet have a discussion yeah but because we have the ability to think beyond going like you come over to this side of the house i'm gonna club you with this microphone and then i'm gonna fucking tell you hail mary and it'll be yeah, fine because no. i'll go i'm sorry it has been two weeks since i last clubbed andy but i am just as sorry that i clubbed but andy today on, as bro. i was last time how many hail marys for me to be not having clubbed andy in the eyes of god that has nothing to do with it my point is if you took religion if you said no religion it's a crutch ever, for dumb people hold on but you're not you're not my point is if religions didn't exist in the world world we would still fucking fight there would still be wars that's that's just that fucking we'll agree to disagree for sure would still happen if you took religion out look at the u.s and china really like the chinese aren't really allowed to do religion like they can't have there so there's no religion there and but we're not at war with china not but we yet. are at war we're, we're, uh, but like, we are we're, at we're war in the middle east club. for going back it's fucking like 30 years we're not at war with china we're not at war with russia we're too and we're, we're not at war so, with so, so hold on a we're second, the two most powerful countries Prano, let me so, like, ask we're not going to go to war you honestly think and as animalistic as humans are in our st- in our nature, and that thirst for power and all the evil bad things that come, you think if religions had never existed, I'm thinking that there wouldn't be war. No, here's the thing: because that's all we I'm have. Saying. We have evolved as people, and one part of evolution, one part of evolving, we're smart enough. We have all the science. We have all the information. We have everything we need to know. It's all fucking laid out there for you. That all of that shit is bullshit. It causes more problems than it solves. It's fucking, it's, it's, it separates people. We've evolved past that, but we're hanging on to it. We have to let it go. We're smart. We've evolved past it. Let's stop saying words that were written 200 years ago. You're not eating food that was made 200 years ago. There wasn't people that are floating in a fucking lab 200 years ago to center themselves. We've we are hanging on to an antiquated crutch. We're still eating foods from 200 years we're, ago. We're we're not eating fucking foods from 200 but years you ago. Still the read, pilgr- the you pilgrims came over with the Indians and fucking turkey, bro. We still have t- turkey for Thanksgiving on, every hold on, night. Hold on a second. You still read stuff from 200 years ago. What am I reading from 200 years ago? All of our history books. All of our history books are fucking giant fake piles of garbage. And who's, 200 years ago. And who's reading them? Everybody that's going through the U.S. school system. Exactly my point. This is exactly my point. 
you're, you're, you're not understanding. We've evolved. We need to st- we need to continue to evolve, and we need to stop oh, yeah. hanging on to things that are that we've evolved beyond. We don't need to. We ha- we also have to evolve. We're hanging on to cars. We've evolved past it. Yeah. Let's get fucking past cars. Nobody thinks Let's like start us. fighting wars. Stop fighting wars over fucking religion and oil and all that stuff. You need to continue to evolve as people, or else you get stagnant and you fucking die. Then and how are you evolving as a person? Let me ask you that. Well, I'm trying to tell everybody that's listening to this show to stop fucking reading prayers from 200 years ago from a thing that's basically a giant fucking rape cover up that, that's, and that's telling you to hate gays and hate fucking people that aren't your color that's, but, and fucking. But that's not true, Joe. You're just you're you're stereotyping every. Everything. You really are. You're, you're lumping. Everything. Everybody here is a, is is talking about being uh, is talking about Christianity. I know, but you're lumping all that in together. That's not that's not true. Everybody doesn't preach hate. No, but that is in that is actually in the book. It's in the fucking book. You don't lay with another man. We've already evolved past that. So take that book and light it on fire, because it's bullshit. Yeah, but what are you? And do- it's wrong. I'm gonna, I have to ask you this: What are you doing every day to evolve? You're talking about everyone else evolving. I'm, I, I'm telling you exactly. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying to. How s- are you evolving as a person, personally? What do you mean? How am I evolving as a person? Because you're talking about everybody else evolving. Yes, I've already evolved past out of the religion thing. We're already beyond that. Okay, we're already past that. So that's I'm already gone from but that. I, but we're I all- his way, his way, saying it evolved from the Bible, evolved yeah. from everything the the religion, and he's already evolved from well, that. Also. Also, why wh- why group religion? Why why would any what religion of God is nature? God is love. Okay, you want to believe in God? Fine, do mushrooms. We all anybody that's done mushrooms has some sort of belief in God. But why do you need to sit with other people and do that? Why is why are you repeating something that somebody else has repeated? Why are you doing something that they taught you when you why were a kid? Why do you go to a baseball game? You're repeating whatever like like I, I just don't understand. That's not, I'm not I'm not making any life choices. I'm fucking I'm not basing how I feel about somebody based on the fucking baseball. I'm not going and being but like. Yeah, you are because we talk about it twice a week. We're 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 basing our opinions based on how people. Yeah, you but, have your but here's on Chase but, Utley yeah, based yeah, on how he plays. Yeah, baseball. Chase Utley's a garbage person, not because of baseball, but because he tried to w- willingly hurt another human being on and, purpose. Because, he tried to hurt somebody. And, and, he wasn't and, playing the game. That was it during a baseball. Game. Yeah, but it was not a base. That's that's why it's not a baseball situation. He tried to hurt somebody. That's. What? That was at a baseball game. What do you're you not, not, you're not understanding. Situation? Here's the problem with Chase Utley. Here's why I hate Chase Utley. He went beyond baseball. He tried to hurt another man. I don't. He probably wears a cross, but he hurt a guy on purpose. He hurt a dude on purpose. He injured a man. What does the Bible say about that? What does Chase Utley, who's probably a fucking Christian, he's probably from the fucking South, he probably fucking wears a cross, what do you think he thinks about on purpose – injuring another human being. If I broke Trevor's leg on purpose, I'm a fucking asshole. I'm an asshole. Baseball, podcast, doesn't matter. You're a fucking dickhead. You're human garbage. You don't go play sports to hurt the quarterback. You try to tackle him for a loss. You don't try to fucking break Tom Brady's knee. And if you do, you're a garbage person. That's the point. And guess what? In the 50s, maybe Dick Butt was, uh, I'm out here to rip dudes' heads off. And then we evolved. We're not fucking doing that anymore. And if you do, you're a bad person. If Chase Utley goes and sits down and goes, uh, fucking Father O'Brien, it has been six weeks since I last fucking injured somebody, but I'm really hurt. I'm really sad. I broke Miguel Tejada's fucking Ruben Tejada's leg. You're still a garbage person. You don't get a fucking free pass because you fucking sat there and were like, well, it was in the game and, you know, it did break up the double play. Garbage human. Baseball aside, garbage human. That's why I hate Chase Utley because he's a garbage person. If I hurt you on purpose, I'm a garbage person. Yeah, yeah, but hold on. Hold on a second. Well, first of all, we got to wrap up this fucking show. This is going on way too long. You don't think somebody could have remorse if they did something terribly wrong? Sure. Have remorse. Doesn't mean he didn't do it on purpose. Everybody that watches it knows he did it on purpose. I love how it all comes full circle to chase up. No, my point is, you're of course you can have remorse, of course. But the idea that then fucking do something about it, do something about being remorseful. Don't just say I'm sorry, I'm sorry, God. We're cool now, right? Because I fucking owned up to it. No, I've done horrible shit, and I try to make up for doing horrible shit by being doing good shit. That's how life works. Do bad shit, do good shit. Not do bad shit, say sorry for fucking bad shit. 
Like in the eye, like in the eyes of God, Aaron Hernandez is fucking. He's in heaven. If there's a heaven, Aaron Hernandez is there, according to your fucking teachings, because he wrote John three sixteen and blood on his fucking head. What do you mean according after, to my teachings? According to your teachings, my teachings. If there's a heaven, and Aaron Hernandez, Who, who's, rep- who's my teachings? Cr- Christianity. Okay. If he repented who, who for said his sin, I was sin, a big time Christian. I was just I was just playing devil's advocate, and I was raised Catholic. Right, and you're still repeating Christian prayers. Okay. Okay. So in your religion, okay, Aaron Hernandez is in fucking utopia. He's in uh, heaven. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? It says it in the book. If he repents, he has eternal fucking happiness. Well, it says a lot of things. Right. So it sounds like that's some fucking. So you 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 don't agree. Well, or you do. You, well, you're picking and choosing right now. And I'm I picking a big one, and we're doing it sports related. So I'm asking you the question. Do you believe if you're a religious person and there's an afterlife and you go there that Aaron Hernandez should also he should have the same level as you? Uh, I've never killed anybody. Right. But that he I repented for of. it. But he repented for it, right? So he's good. Yay or nay? I don't think he repented for it. Well, he fucking wrote the well, religious shit on his forehead and he was a super religious guy and there was a Bible in his fucking but, thing. But big deal. That's that those are those are those are just displays. Those right. Aren't, those aren't our actual Great. Actions. So we all agree that the fucking entire basis for Christianity and how you get to the afterlife is fucking horseshit. Well, that's debatable. I, right. I, I, I mean, I, yeah. No, 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 Joe. I'm not here. I'm not here to sit there and have that lengthy debate. No, it's fine. You can have your religion. Just say that the Christianity part is horseshit because that's you either agree or you disagree. But you could say that about any religion. Oh, I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Finally. And my fucking good deed for the week is hopefully somebody out there is going, yeah, I don't think Aaron Hernandez should be in heaven with me if there is a heaven. It's just be a good person. I'm a Trevor. I'm the exact same way as fucking Trevor is. I don't know one way or the other. So I'm going to just be good to people. I fucking treat people well. You're like, oh, that's your good deed for the fucking week when you help that fucking crazy fucking homeless wheelchair lady plug in. It's like I'm not doing a good deed for the week. It's like what am I supposed to do? This crazy homeless person is like asking me to fucking plug her thing in. Was I like, oh, my God, this 300-pound cross-eyed fucking lady who I can actually smell wants me to dig underneath her for a fucking plug to plug in her wheelchair? Do I want to do this? No. The idea of it makes me want to fucking saw off my right arm that touched her. But you, you're you a good person. I fucking helped her because she was, uh, she was a handicapped person and she was in need. That's what you do. You're a good person. I'm not tr- doing it to go to fucking heaven. I'm just doing it because you fucking be good. Just building credit. Yeah. Building credit. B- building credit. Go to credit. Yeah. Or just fucking because that's the right thing to do. I would have pissed on her. <laughs> You're not going to heaven. Unless you fucking say sorry for it, like, at the last minute. Just, Joe and just, I will be waiting for just you have a priest, Just Hopefully have a priest come in. to your hospital bed and read your final rites, and where, you're all good. Where did, uh, where did the show turn? You know, I don't know. But that is the show. It turned with the conspiracy theory. God, the guy was trolling me, but it worked for f- a good 25 <laughs> minutes. DirtySports.com. If you guys want to hear next week's uh, Dirty Religion. Yeah. <laughs> Father O'Brien. I'm going to come on the intern. Can I be a guest on the interns? We'll talk more about this. Nothing? You guys don't have anything to push? I f- <laughs> JoePrano.com for shows. Uh, at Fix Your Life on Twitter. Uh, good start to fixing your life is uh, get out of organized religion. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I no. Just don't, just don't be harmful to people. I, I'm not against organized religion, by the way. Okay. You're wrong. Um, JoePrano.com for shows. All of my shows are there. The ballparks and bits tours coming up, or the uh, punchlines and pitch counts. We'll see. But uh, lots of shows coming up. Find them all there at JoePrano.com. Andy. Yeah, DirtySports.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Lots of stuff popping. Stoned in Venice. The interns. Four-hour episode about religion. It's all gonna be on YouTube. Check it out, guys. I feel like I feel like m- the next spinoff is just gonna have to be. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have to fucking just do my own thing. Sit alone. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna go full burr. Shocking. Who's been telling you to do that forever? 
Who's been telling you to do well, that now, forever? Well, now I just found out I do a podcast with three Christians. I'm like, fuck. I'm going to break off. Somewhat Christian. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm, I, I I couldn't see EJ through the light the whole time, so I couldn't get I can't get the sense of him. He's so Latino looking though. They're they're always so religious. Can we in this so I can go pee? Yeah. You peed three times. Yes. Pray. So go pee. Pray to not piss your pants. As I look at the <laughs> Harambe on a cross above my bed. Yeah. By the way, fucking completely sacrilegious. No, I know. <laughs> fucking two of them. Who said I was the diehard Christian? That that that, that ape was about to kill a baby. Yeah. Well, now he's in heaven? I didn't see him go to confession before the end. Harambe, <laughs> this one's for you, buddy. Never forget, condoms are for pussies. Oh, my God. Welcome to, welcome to the Dirt and Sports Podcast.